Hey guys, welcome to Mania, dogs. Wow, <laughs> it's, it's WrestleMania. It's the big time. So much larger than life. My big time. That... All right, four seconds in. Editor Ty has already taken something out. We're, <laughs> We're going for it. It's big, big time. Big time. All right, so, so, so we much all larger than life. Whole fucking thing uh, yeah. together in the same room. Uh, we Nico did it had live. Tuber- yeah, Nico had tuberculosis, but that's fine. Uh, Peter Gabriel was there in the corner. Yes. Yeah, we tied him up and held him at gunpoint. Every time we'd tickle him with the gun and he'd say, Big time! So it much like larger a, than the life. It was like a fake gun, though. The one that kind of points out and then yeah, we would rolls never... down a big piece of paper that says bang on it. And Peter yeah. Gabriel thought it was really funny. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. Would, we would never do something it. like that. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. No, no, wait, wait. No, I was just kidding. Wait. <laughs> what do you guys think Peter Gabriel's up to now? Hmm. I, know. I know. I think he's booking the Qatari uh, pro wrestling uh, bed right now. <laughs> he was... <laughs> He was around area we live at time within the last twelve months. Wow! Doing a concert, so uh, so we you're forgot telling me he's to... booking UWFI now? Yeah, we forgot to go to place at time, but rest assured, uh, with your help, patrons, we will make the next Peter Gabriel concert at location. Anyway, uh, Ty tricked us into watching the pre-show for this shit, <laughs> which exists only on YouTube. And is one match that's eleven minutes long. Well, I and showed was up in, at Joe thirty. Let me. Yeah, and, and was in seventy forty four p. Let's run through these participants 60p. real quick. Raw was represented by Eugene Goldust, Viscera, Tyson Tomko, Rob Conway, Lance Cade, Trevor Murdoch, and Matt Stryker. While SmackDown had Super Crazy, Psychosis, Funaki, Steven Richards, where's he been? Johnny Nitro, Joey Mercury, the Road Warrior, as he's being called now, William yeah. Regal, and Simon Dean. And it starts off, Simon Dean gets on the mic and he goes, Hey, hey, everybody. And then just gets fucking punched and fucking thrown out. Like he <laughs> didn't even get a chance to say shit. They killed him immediately. See, I'm surprised you could figure out who that was. The only well, yeah, person that's I my could dog. actually see <laughs> on the two bit rate fucking YouTube video we had was Viscera because he's giant and in a big jacket. <laughs> Other than that, it's just blobs moving around fighting. Yeah, every, everybody was wearing the shirt. Like they were wearing a shirt or they cut off the sleeves for like what show they were on. Red for Raw, Blue for SmackDown. Viscera came out with his normal big suede like tracksuit and then had like the Raw shirt cut and he like kept it around his neck like a like a bib which i thought was pretty funny yeah it was it was bad. like it was Get more up. like a, a little neckerchief that like an old-timey like vampire would wear you know he just yeah. tucks it in when how long, much longer is this right here for dude like I, a live or well <laughs> give us both. Me still sure, alive. both yeah what's both okay so he's with what till, like he's with the company to like 08 09 and he passed away around 09 2010. So Actually, no, no, I think it was 2014 he passed. So, yeah, like 09, 08, he stopped. And then 2014 he passed. I remember that was very sad. I'm not even going to lie. I don't remember him dying. What? <laughs> Dude, I don't. Alert, alert. Well, wait until uh, we get to Extremely Sideways. Oh, or Diagonal he... Extreme. Oh. You know, it, doesn't he look like a, kind of a fat Tony Todd? If this is racist, cut it out. Who the fuck is Tony Todd? Do you you see had to pick Candyman in the old movies, you fucking weirdo. Well, let's, let's call up Tony Todd. Let's look up Tony Todd. Put respect Todd. on Tony Todd's name. He, let's he call doesn't look like Viscera to me. Hold on, let me look up now a picture of Viscera. If this is racist, cut it out is the smack up tagline. <laughs> what about Sweeney Todd? Sweeney Todd Demon Barber. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, Fleet Street. I don't We're five minutes into this. Brother. Yeah. And it's already nothing. We're Do you guys see the Tony words. Todd... Uh... The comparison, or am I, am I racist? I, I don't see the like comparison. Racist. I think he might be racist. <laughs> you don't see it. <laughs> this is not getting cut out. <laughs> uh, Trevor Murdoch could not wear a fucking t-shirt. His gut was fucking out there, man. I was like, damn. Like a bib. Yeah, he was wearing it like a bib more than anyone else. And I just read a fucking like little thing from Dave saying that he was going to be the Intercontinental Champion around this time, and why? Who who cares? Everyone, every time I bring up Trevor Murdoch, I get yelled at by Martin and Dave and Nico and 
Because Emerald's here. Okay, who? Current oh. former That's okay. NWA who? champion. It's going to get cut out. Don't worry. It won't who? get cut. That's staying on. Emerald, Emerald here doesn't even know who that is. This whole what? episode is staying in. This whole episode? You're going to get Dox, pal. You're coming. <laughs> I'm coming for you. I'm to come. Right, anyway, Viscera wins. Oh, no way, dude. Hold on. The tag team champs were here, and they got humped on by Viscera. And then, awesome. and then they got, Melina they got screamed. Double, they got double stack, double humps, double pump. Melina yeah. screamed. Melina didn't do the splits. And Taz uh, said, why are you saying dang, Michael Cole? Say damn. And then Michael Cole said, the show hasn't started yet. And Taz <laughs> laughed. And that's the end of the match. Viscera won. Yeah, yeah, Michael Cole was truly, about truly to get on a, a nothing, a nothing event in 240p. Wow, Viscera won the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. Show is starting. America the it's Beautiful. Re- it's real. The show has actually started. America has hit the big time. We're hit the big time, baby. Michelle Williams big from Destiny's time. Child's here. Is that who that was? Yes. Yeah, she shows up and she goes like, "America, Fuck America." Yeah. And then, as she's singing that, it just keeps cutting between wrestlers at Tribute to the Troops. I I don't know why. It also cut to soldiers picking up, like, just divas in bikinis. Yeah. Yeah, we saw saw Naram there, too. Kind of, like, haunting imagery when you really, when you have the full context now. Yeah. We know. We know what they did. Did they know? What was Ric Flair doing? Oh, Ric Flair was loading up the drones. <laughs> or whatever he was doing. He's smacking his damn triceps yeah. over. He was slapping his arms <laughs> his... for America. Uh, Joe, said he was America. His car, Joe said he was charging up the drones. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad Joe and Naram are on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> wait, wait, I gotta take it back, though. I gotta take it back, though. Real quick. Yeah. What did you guys think about Bret Hart winning a medal for fucking his dad? That was awesome. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Tr- truly Canada's greatest soldier. Some people were fucking their dads before there were awards in it. I don't respect it. Yeah, I mean, Oedipus fucked his mom. Well, look, Bret Hart. <laughs> Bret Hart, of course, would have to get an award for it. Because he's yeah. that, you know, he he gave himself the award. Yeah, his dad gave him the award. Where are the, the Uncle Fucker dude? Awards, huh? <laughs> All right, that's the segment. <laughs> uh, we get right into the first match of the night. I mean, obviously, not the pre-show, but everyone loves the pre-show. We you do, know, we do. Rod Down is here to talk about the World Tag Team Championship match. You know, Big Show and Kane defending against uh, Martin's five-star warrior, Chris Masters, and uh, Carlito, I guess. Is what? that my cue? Yeah. If you want it to be. Yeah, I mean, I was going to go. It'll be cut out. <laughs> you could take the floor. I know Carlito's your man. All right, no, strong energy to start this off. Oh, yeah. Right. It's big time. Right, leave it all in. Leave it Leave it all in. This is <laughs> this is pure uncut, raw down. This is what the patrons pay for. It's just absolute <sighs> shit audio content of us mm-hmm. babbling. Anyway, so Carlito and Chris Masters versus the Big Kane. My first thought, thank God they're at least getting this out of the way uh, to start. However, dear listener, I have yet another astonishing conclusion to uh, draw here. This match wasn't bad. It wasn't. It was, I would dare say, fine to above average. They tried as best they can in this one. And that's that's all you can hope for, really. So we get Carlito coming out, and his shirt says, Do you spit or swallow? Ugh. Do you do you get it? Like Apple, but also come. Is this the first time he's had that shirt? Because I remember it's that the being first a bit. Time I remember seeing it because I feel like we'd have talked about it. Has he not done the the like bit behind the stage where he says, "Do you spit or swallow?" I'm not gonna say with who. I feel like I would have noticed if he did. I mean, granted, when he comes on screen, I go into a fugue state, but I think one of us would have picked up on it, right? <laughs> so I think that's new. Okay. And yeah, so yeah, uh, Chris Masters comes out. Uh, Emerald says masterpiece more like master penis. So that's the sort of energy we're starting this show with. I did say uh, that's right. The master lock, the master penis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Master lock more like master oh. cock. That's right. <laughs> and then our uh, editor Ty add in some air horns here. You got to talk about Carlito Gears of War rolling down the stage for no reason. 
starting off hot. <laughs> yeah, Carlito came to play. He didn't take any bumps this whole match, but he did do a roll. So, uh, Big Show and Kane come out to a really fucked up mashup of their theme song. It doesn't work. And uh, Kane hits the pyro, and as he's doing this, Big Show is just menacingly leering behind him. And he looks like Kane's stand. Somebody made that joke. Yeah. I forget yep. who, but it wasn't me. It's but good. all of my uh, JoJo enjoyers, shout out to you guys. Anime is bad, <laughs> but uh, wrestling is even worse. Very so true. we start off, and Kane and Chris Masters start exchanging holds and just some knockdowns. And I immediately go into, well, this is the match I thought it was. And then yeah. Kane hits a leapfrog and then a drop kick, and we all get excited. Because this large man has finally actually done something. And then, for a while, uh, we have a weird setup where the faces get all the heat on the heels. Because Chris Master can't work and Carlito refuses to. So, a lot of keeping them down for a few minutes. Uh, Carlito does a bit where he tries to arm wrench the Big Show. But Big Show too big and picks him up and crushes him on the rope. And then he... Uh, throws Carlito and Chris Masters both over the rope, and Kane goes from the top rope to the floor with the Kane line. So Kane really doing his best here to do the, you know, few cool things he can still do at this point. Uh, Big Show lifts Carlito up by the hair from the floor to the apron, chucks him into the ring, more fighting back and forth. Kane misses a Kane line, puts and uh, the Master Lock is put in on him. But Big Show saves him with a super kick. Yes, folks, Big Show hit a super kick. That was, it was so crazy. cool. Yeah, it was crazy. I don't think it got Chris Masters in the head, but it got way higher up than uh, Big Old Big Show should have. There's some more us for editor Ty shout out. Oh yeah. Woo! We'll see if that stays in the episode. <laughs> so Chris Masters now saves Carlito from a choke slam. More back and forth. Kane does the sit up, sets up for a double choke slam, but they block it. More fighting back and forth that I didn't find relevant enough to keep a play-by-play -play of. And then Kane hits a choke slam on Carlito and wins. And the big Kane is happy and celebrating. And Carlito and Chris Masters are having a lot of uh, discord and anger inside the ring at the end of this match. They are really just talking and going through it like they did for... The yeah. four months leading up to this where every week they were like, bro, it's fine, bro, I swear. I don't care that I cheated to, like, it's... you know, make you lose. It's great. And we end on a shot of a sign that has Dumb and Dumber written on it. And there's <laughs> a picture of Carlito and Chris Masters. Really got him. Very true. Listen, I oh, yeah. hot take. I like that Kane and Big Show won. I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but... Whatever they cooked up last week where they actually started showing personality and doing Looney Tunes-ass shit that probably everyone thinks is bad, uh, they actually seemed like a team and like care about each other rather than just, hey, we're just singles wrestlers with tag belts that we're never going to showcase because we don't fucking give a shit about tag teams. And then, of course, Vince has got to be like, hey, Carlito and Chris Masters are the only tag team other than that. And they hate each other. <laughs> and let's throw them together, even though they just broke up the week before. And I'm pretty sure uh, Martin is ecstatic. To, like, hopefully that they're dead in hell and they stop teaming up. I hope so. I <laughs> hope they both get banned from the show forever. Yeah, Maybe we all Rory do. and Mick, or whoever the fuck you were talking about seven months ago, <laughs> fucking Highlanders, are going to be on Raw. Oh yeah, the Highlanders. Dude, I don't know who's a tag team anymore. Like, even on Heat, like, the, currently Heat, do they have, like, what, Cade and Murdoch? I think they were tag team champs the, the year prior. I think Big Show Kane the, won the belts from them. There's the Spirit Squad. Yeah, they're new. Yeah, maybe Spirit Squad will get the belt soon. Maybe Who knows? somebody needs to get the belt soon. I Carlito think, and Chris Masters will probably just win it the Raw after Mania for some stupid reason. I fucking hope not, dude. But yeah, I thought this was a fantastic match. Big Show and Kane yeah. gave it their all. Uh, Carlito, uh, you know, exists. No, they definitely like defied all expectations I had with this match. I mean, I'm sure listeners have heard us dog them in the past, but Big Show and Kane actually both came out with the belts this time. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they both, like, they all did real moves and, like, had good ring chemistry and just kind of worked. 
uh, and defeated, uh, you know, the most hated duo on the show. So it was it was just a good match. It was good. What can we say? A good match on a freaking WWE show? Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah Carlito and Chris Masters were going to lose regardless because those are big men with big <laughs> menace. That's right. I, You know, I think sure. they have big menace. Big man, big menace for sure. Do you think if Emerald was in the, the booking room at the time and he yelled big menace, Vince would have been like, hmm, that's what we need to call him. Oh, you know damn well there would have been like a new just big giant guy named Big Menace who would have just like... <laughs> Oh, he's the third. Been some sort of yeah, he would have been some sort of like jobber, or he would have been like their like he'd have been their know, guy, their, like, the helper, kingpin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like he's their guy. Yeah, it's Omos. Host Ty <laughs> thinking I can yeah. spend a minute in the same room with Vince McMahon. That's a challenge. <laughs> Even more of a challenge is Shawn Michaels on the promo with the uh, coach, and coach goes, "Hey, how do you feel about your match with Vince?" And Sean, with his cross on, cross-eyed, everything crossed on him, he said, hey, I love God, and God will get me through this. God, please help me. And God, thank God. And Coach goes, okay. Sweet. Next segment, guys. <laughs> and that's that, then, then they just cut to the, what, with the next match. But, like, what the fuck's up with Sean and all about God all of a sudden? That just came out of nowhere, it felt like. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of always been there, but they're really pushing it they now. They pushed like, every sentence like, he says, God. Yeah. No, it's like, because, like, I think even when he came back, I mean, it was like he, he'd bring up this stuff. But not, now they're pushing it really hard. Almost like they got a plan or something with this. Yeah. Definitely kind of out there. See, so now I'm ready for in, like, a month there to be in, you know for the conjecture here but that it's going this is going to spiral into uh sean is like the the god god warrior and then vince is going to be some sort of uh satan foil and he's going to be red in every piece of promotion going forward and i'm ready for it i guess there you go we're in money in the bank <laughs> it's money so so here. much and, larger than and my sean and benjamin money. ran off the ladder yeah my dude balls. Ric Flair is wrestling. This will be his second ladder match uh, in, in 2006 thus far, which is crazy. Second ladder match of his career. Good lord. Speaking might be the last one, one. I don't know. Speaking of which, I Did read his daughter a, know. I read a, I read Mr. Dave's uh, you know newsletter, and he said, "Why don't they just put the belt on Ric Flair at this point? He's the most over person in the company, and he should have won the TLC match." Mm, yeah. Damn. Yeah, give give that fifty seven year old his due. <laughs> oh shit! Crazy one thing. Last, I one just last found rub. He also Somebody said that that man three pints of Guinness. Ashley Flair uh, should be a star one day, but they had to change her name to Garrison or something. What? Oh, I see. Yes. All right. Yeah, the whatever. infinite wisdom. We love Money in the Bank. Yeah, so we got yeah. Bobby Lashley. We got. Oh yeah. We got yep. Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah kids today will never know that Matt Hardy out. can slap a tornado. <laughs> Bro. Or this his tag team partner, his best buddy. Or oh, was Tatanka? You don't. Yeah. We don't know. You know. No, where, where was Tatanka? Finley's out. Reserve. Finley's here. He's coming out. He's got a shillelagh. He's ready to fucking go crazy. I yep. have never seen a Money in the Bank entrant get such a mild reaction. As yeah, no one cared. Not. <laughs> you know, the I... last like the last like two months of booking for SmackDown have done like absolutely nothing for Finley. Every match ends in either disqualification because he refuses to stop fighting, or a countout because he refuses to stop fighting outside the ring. Yeah, or he Finley loses. has like one good moment, and that's when him and fucking right? Bobby Lashley were just being the shit out of each other. And then, like, Bobby Lashley, like, flipped a car over him. It was awesome. Remember when JBL made him apparently come out and then, like, kidnap somebody for Bobby Lashley? To... It was, was it? Crystal. Was it? Was it? He kidnapped yeah, it was Crystal. Crystal. Yeah. 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 And... It should have been me. 
And then he like <laughs> fought Bobby Lashley for like five seconds and then ran away. And then JBL had had the match and then he came out again at the end and fought. And he fought with the oh, and Finley yeah. killed the little uh the little person uh division. Oh, I dude. mean the junior division, my bad. Mm-hmm. Finley um burying the junior division oh. or whatever it was called was awesome. It's just fucking nuts. We'll get into the what I was gonna talk about with Bret Hart in the Hall of Fame coming up in a couple segments. But we also got Raw people, guys. It's not just SmackDown. We got Sheldon wow. Benjamin. And we got Where Richard is Flair. Where is Mama Benjamin? She unfortunately passed, guys. Let's just, oh. guys. That's actually oh. a lie. I looked her up. I looked her up. She's alive. Fucking what are you asshole. talking about? What? No, the character Mama Benjamin's Carter. dead, dude. No, no, the woman who was Mama Benjamin is alive and well. And this she is looks a... back on the segment with extreme fondness, and we should put respect on her name because she did a great job with absolute garbage. Shout out to Thea Fidel. Yeah. Beautiful woman. Put respect mm-hmm. on Bless. her name. Mama Bless. Benjamin. R.I.P. R- R- Mama DeMenjamin. <laughs> Mama DeMenjamin. <laughs> and RVD. One of a kind. <laughs> And Battle Creek, Michigan is here, guys. I don't know what the fuck Meltzer is talking about. Rob Van Dam is the most over person in the goddamn company, other than, yeah. like, maybe Batista. Yeah, everyone loves that, man. My Meltzer favorite might part be is when RVD jumps Whoa, off of the I, fucking okay, corner well, and just drop know, kicks somebody RVD, in the chair. You know, I mean, well, you tell me. You tell me why it's bad. That's like the, tip, that's like the Dave Meltzer thing. Dave Meltzer is straight edge. Dave Meltzer oh. would be like, he smokes weed. <laughs> True. True. I, I don't remember this match being this good, but when I watched it with everybody, I was having a very good time with it. I there did, were a like, couple moments where we really popped. Maybe maybe I was jaded by like watching so many Money in the Bank matches at once. If I, by so it. many, I mean one previously mean? because there's only been one before. It was, it was good. I liked it a lot. Finley and Ric Flair looked out of place. Although Richard just kept fucking getting suplex off the ladder and yeah, screaming his ass off. Yeah, he was protecting his back off of those uh, falling the la- off the ladder spots. He was protecting his back his by falling on his hip. It's and he looked like he was really in pain for a lot of the match, which I believed. That he had to leave. And and when Matt Hardy hit a uh, top rope leg drop, he hit the he got up on the ladder, hit the oh yeah. <laughs> and then did a ba- little baby leg drop. It looked like just, his fucking like a Mortal Kombat like X move, and his fucking spine came up. And again, he just, the, ah, shit. That's why his yeah, hip fused to his spread. spine. That's why that he was... walks around like a baby with a loaded diaper. Yeah, that's the, why he <laughs> walks around like the dad, like the grandpa from fucking King of the Hill. <laughs> the fuck's his name? Cotton? Cotton, Cotton, Cotton Hill. Hill yeah. uh, he walks around like Cotton Hill and has CTE. Go figure. <laughs> He climbs up the ladder again while doing that and then does a side effect to fucking Finley and <laughs> just kills him. And Matt's just dying on the floor. Like, he's just a pool of sweat in the mat. Like, well, stop I'm doing this to your body, dude. Everywhere. What do the Raw boys think, dude? Uh, Finley, Finley is green cane. That's, <laughs> that's green all cane. I have to say. <laughs> Irish cane. Irish cane. Irish cane. We haven't green even cane, heard from our funny. Raw Down correspondent. Martin. Yeah, well, I, look, do you want me to just actually run through this? Yeah, match? run through the I'm match. The person, I'm the only person here that has notes, by the way. Yeah. I'm just so. remembering. It's, it was a good match, man. No, it was we good. Got, we got Martin Notes' last name over here because all he ever does when we have these joint podcasts is talk about how he has notes. Notes well, yeah. Jones over here. This yeah, guy, this... listen, to any of you motherfuckers <laughs> had notes, I wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> it's true. I don't, I don't need notes, buddy. <laughs> I was stenographing all the, the horrific things you people said. I sent them to the FBI. Don't worry. Hey, anyway. <laughs> There's a Google Drive link with our name on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, everybody gets in the ring, and uh, Matt immediately brings a ladder in, and then Rob Van Dam just kicks the shit out of him with the ladder and then hits a crossbody out of the ring onto the ladder because he's insane. Uh, Shelton Benjamin steals this ladder and beats up Finley with it. Uh... And then everybody's just on the outside waiting for something to happen. And Shelton Benjamin props the ladder up onto the ring ropes, uh, does the thing where he runs up the ladder, and flips onto everybody except for Finley, who's laying somewhere else at this point for some reason. Finley and Ric Flair now start fighting for the last biscuit at Bob Evans. Ric Flair wins that, but then Matt Hardy does the superplex, 
off of the ladder onto Ric Flair. Uh, the corrupt SmackDown ref throws up the X because he does not want any Raw person to win this match, and Ric Flair uh, leaves. Uh, Rob Van Dam then hits a rolling thunder onto a ladder after Shelton Benjamin gets off so the ladder. Disgusting. Yeah, more fighting. Uh, probably the coolest thing that happens in this whole match, uh, Shelton Benjamin hits a sunset flip over a ladder and attempts to pull Bobby Lashley down with him, but Bobby Lashley holds on. And then Lashley, Hardy, and Finley hit uh, Shelton Benjamin with a shield bomb. Uh, Matt Hardy squishes Finley between the turnbuckle and the ladder, and then Finley just throws it right at his head and knocks the shit out of him. Ric Flair comes stumbling back. Fit Finley has no reaction to that at all. Uh, he's probably remembering his son is David Finley and how disappointed he is. <laughs> um, they fight on the ramp. Rick wins, climbs a ladder. Uh, Matt Hardy and Shelton Benjamin start fighting him. He chops them away, and then he climbs up to reach the briefcase, but he is shillelied off of the ladder, and he is now dead. And uh, the briefcase is swinging, so Finley just has to wait at the top of a ladder for like three minutes until he can actually get a hold of it. And then uh, there's another ladder castle right next to the ladder Finley has on. There's Ric Flair and Shelton on it. And then uh, Lash Lashley just pushes that ladder onto a ladder that has Flair and Shelton on. Then all those ladders topple. Somehow nobody dies. Uh, Emerald points out that Bobby Lashley is terrified of climbing ladders, and he's correct. I don't... <laughs> They they do that with he a looks, lot of like bigger guys, yeah. like bigger, bulkier guys. They do that bit. I don't I don't get it. I don't yeah, think it's, it's a like bit. a thing. Or, no, no, yeah, th no. These ladders are rickety as hell. Dude, just, yeah, yeah. Like, they were that. suspect. Ty, when's the last well, time you climbed a ladder as a big boy? Uh, a couple weeks ago. That's pretty scary. Yeah, right. How do you think Bob Lashley feels? He's at least twice the size of you. Is he? Yes. In terms Bob of Lashley is like what six. Nine? I don't well, think actually, he's that big. No, he's like six one, six two. He's not. But like in terms of there. girth, you, like, oh yeah, like yeah, the, you got the ladders. Six foot three, two hundred and seventy pounds. Yeah. You no know, cowards don't know how to climb ladders. All right, yeah, we're gonna have gonna a ladder. We're gonna have the, you don't have to do this podcast special where Emerald climbs a ladder. Yeah, Emerald <laughs> is seven foot two, four hundred pounds. By the yep. way, he yes, can run so up ladders I am sideways. A talking horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, so yeah, Breaking Lashley climbs up. H N B R. Lashley climbs <laughs> up a few rungs. Uh, RVD uh, decides to jump off of screen and hit the Van Daminator on. It was Bobby so Lashley, fucking cool. It was, was the coolest shit collect. I've ever seen. Yeah, it was rad as hell. Uh, Bobby Lashley didn't know how to sell that. I don't know if anybody told him this was going to happen, but surely nobody would expect him with a Van Daminator on a ladder because Rob Van Dam is a crazy person. So he gets hit with it, stands there for a second, then just like, oh, and flails himself off. Uh, I mean, wrestling is real. He didn't sell anything. He was just stunned. Um, uh, Matt Hardy and Finley, the fuck on the ladder, and then the side effect onto Finley off of the ladder that we talked about. That uh probably finally shoves his hips up and do his I think seventh sacral vertebrae at this point. You don't have <laughs> seven of those, but it's fine. RVD hits a frog splash on the top of the ladder onto Finley, but Finley's too close, so instead of like jumping, Rob Van Dam just kind of like falls off of the top of a ladder. Because if we got any forward momentum, he would have just cleared it horrifically. Uh, Shelton Benjamin way. does the thing where he jumps off of the top rope from the outside onto a ladder. And they all start fighting, and then Rob Van Dam just knocks over a ladder with a bunch of people on it. He climbs his own ladder, and Rob Van Dam is your Money in the Bank champion. And, and the crowd he... that has been desperately pleading for him to win this whole match is extremely happy. And, he and then he it. just falls directly off the ladder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he falls breaking almost... his ankle. Oh, yeah, he almost broke his fucking shit. I don't know how he did. It, it was crazy as fuck. Just I really was worried. Man. He built different. But but yeah, he's he, also just so high he can't feel it. Very deserved. And guess what? Raw up, raw down, smack, get out of here. Raw won both mixed matches. Okay, it's well, true. guess what? Oh get shit! Ready wait, for hold shit up. to go sideways oh, 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 in about oh, oh, two oh, months, guys, buddy. I'm getting pulled away. Oh, oh. Hey guys, smack oh, up tie here. Guys. Fuck raw oh. down. Fuck raw. Oh my god! Hell yeah! <laughs> That's what I'm wow. talking about. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Kill him. 
Hill Fuck, we're on top. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Wow, oh, shit. dude. Hey, guys, editor Ty here. <laughs> What's up, editor Ty? I editor need to Ty know. Is beyond pissed at I need... what is happening. It's like, I don't know, October <laughs> of 2027 when editor Ty's listening to this. <laughs> he's going back over to this and he's like, these bitches. <laughs> hey, man. Listen to this. I need Emerald's thoughts on this match because it's his first ladder match ever. Well, besides Rob Van Dam and uh, Ric Flair, I don't know who anybody else is. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, after seeing uh, Ric Flair get absolutely uh, destroyed for being an old man still wrestling, I felt kind of bad. And then I stopped feeling bad when he decided to come back. Like, <laughs> okay, he's just crazy. He does not get paid enough, but he also still gets paid a lot. Way too much, let's um, be honest. Woo-wings! Um, I don't remember much. I just kept thinking uh, how fast... Th these should go fast because, uh, you know, it's not that hard. But <laughs> nobody knows how to climb a ladder. Nobody just jumps through the case and forces it to break because these guys have to be heavy to do this shit. And, like, I don't know. Uh, it, it was, uh, okay, not super memorable. However, I did like that, uh, when, uh, Rob Van Dam, uh, got the case, he immediately, uh, fumbled, fell off the ladder, uh, and just sort of rolled around for a bit. So, I will say that. Fair enough. Hey, okay, okay. Yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> right. Yeah, so since the money in the bank is now through, we will talk about... Josh Matthews being backstage, and I have not seen this guy show up since we started. Maybe he's back from stop. I think it was either him or Todd Grissom saying the R word on camera. Oh. But I think it was Todd Grissom. <laughs> I can barely tell on like a. It was a bite this WWE promo, and uh, someone called up asking about TNA, and he calls them. Oh, so you watch that R crap? <laughs> <laughs> so real for that. Wow! So I uh, think it I don't. Is, it is Todd Grisham. Okay, it was Todd Grisham. Video on YouTube, by the way. I apologize, Josh Matthews. You're free this time, but he's got Mean Gene in the back, and uh, Mean Gene is here, and he's like, "Hey, I'm really happy that." And then Randy Orton appears behind him, and he goes, "Hey, why are you even going in the Hall of Fame? You all Damn. you did was be on the microphone for 35 years." And Mean Gene, I don't know if he knew this was going to happen because he looks actually genuinely pissed. And he goes, why? And he just, like, walks off and he goes, your old man wouldn't. And then Randy Orton, like, legitimately goes, what did, what did he say? And then that doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter. He goes, I will, be, I will be the world heavyweight champion by the end of the day. And, Kurt a and then behind him, breathing behind, is Batista. And he goes, Ooh. hey, hey, Randy. And they get really close together. Just like uh, Cena and H would do every week, but um, no they kissing, kiss. unfortunately. Yeah, Batista nope. says, "I know Narum and Ty sitting at home oh, watched no. us, watch my arm getting torn apart, torn to shreds. Watch my, pe watch my penis surgery. My penis yeah, we surgery. Saw, we saw his penis surgery. He said, Pete, you're lucky on this one, but Narum yeah. is scarred. I'm gonna be back soon, and Randy." I'm going to be world heavyweight champion. It doesn't matter if you win. It doesn't matter if, uh, if Ray wins. It doesn't matter if Kurt wins. You guys are just paper champions, just like you guys have said for weeks. It's my belt. I'm coming for it. Yeah, I was um, taking a piss when this happened, so I missed all of it entirely. Yeah, yeah. Batista was uh, dressed up. He was ranch, and he was ready. He was in uh, <laughs> his giant suit again. Batista's yep. favorite thing is giant suits. This was one and of the all-time Batista moments. I, dude, I don't get these backstage segments. Like the first two backstage segments, we, we just had Shawn Michaels on a little bit ago, and now Randy and Batista. This one actually meant something because Batista hasn't been on that often. But why are they just saying nothing? Like I'm gonna win the oh. match. Like who? Like you know, we know this. We we built this up for weeks. Say something. Build something up. No, 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 no. no. Like I would rather have Mean Gene talk for a little bit, but whatever they're just going to show them anyway because now here comes the hall of famers 
That's hey, fun. guys, we got Mean Gene coming out to the ring. And he's talking about, oh. like, they don't talk. They're just uh, presenting them. So we got Mean Gene. We got the Black Jacks, which had a very weird, like, because I watched the Hall of Fame speech. We didn't talk about it. It's three hours. I'm not going to subject these boys to watching this shit. So I have to do it. So Jack Lanza made some weird, like, promo about Bobby Heenan's dog. And then Blackjack Mulligan had this very somber, sad speech, and it made himself tear up, made me tear up. And that's Bray Wyatt's grandpa, for anyone who doesn't know. And yep. it's it's very sad to hear him because he sounds just like his grandson. Them and boys really know how to make people cry. Yeah, man. It's very, very touching. And if only Nico it's was well here deserved. to say something bad about Bray Wyatt. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. <laughs> good thing good thing we keep him away. Easy, though. Take it easy. Uh we had who else was in the Hall of Fame guys? We had Sherry come out. She had she some say? very drunk, very weird <laughs> promo. I I'm, I'm happy for her because she seemed very thankful, very personable. She was talking about all these personal stories. It didn't seem like everyone was comfortable with those stories, and then some fans were being very weird. <laughs> yeah, there so. was a fan who Ty claims said, "I want to fuck you." And they got like yeah, that. and they got kicked out. And then the fans started kick him out, kick him out. And That's I forget, and I forget that this is like a a place with like all fans and wrestlers because every single person was saying, "One more match, one more match, one more match." Like, shut the fuck Harry? up. <laughs> they just would stop. Uh, next comes out refrigerator Perry. Um, it's weird because John Cena inducted him, and they did that as a bit because the fans fucking hated him. Jordan, er, Jordan, <laughs> Jordan Cena is coming Jordan. out, and he's orange as shit in a black suit. Everyone's booing him at the Hall of Fame itself, and it's so weird because they're like, okay, well, let's turn this into a bit. Triple H stands up, and the crowd starts going crazy, and I don't get it. The context, and, no, no. The context is important. We're we are in the peak of um, oh yeah, old older dudes hating yeah. Cena. Like anybody over the age of twenty fucking wanted John Cena to die on the level that everybody over the age of like eighteen wanted uh, Roman Reigns to die after which, he beat Daniel Bryan in the Royal Rumble. But yes, that makes sense in context of like today. But like as we're watching on Raw, it doesn't really translate that well because John Cena doesn't get. As bad as he did at the Hall of Fame, maybe it's just Chicago. Get, yeah, no, yeah, definitely Chicago shitters being a thing, but it's just going to get continuously worse. Chicago notoriously actually makes wrestling worse in general, as we'll find yeah. out in the future. Very true. What do you What do you mean by that? I mean, uh, CM Punk is a big shitty baby. We'll get that in the main event. <laughs> But for but now, the like, most notable like... thing from Chicago, Chicago's favorite son is a pizza that isn't a pizza. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's like a pie. <laughs> it's a pie. Can you explain this? <laughs> I refuse. I don't go to Chicago. If you know, you know. Martin, would you say that John Cena is getting detrimentally booed on Raw? Not every week, no. That's what. That's what's so crazy to like have this like Hall of Fame speech, and he's inducting somebody, and the crowd's just booing him, like. Come on, man. Yeah, he, uh, it is Chicago. It Chicago, Philly, whatever. You're fucking... You're the other whatever. thing to consider is, like, to go to um, the Hall of Fame, you have to be a real fucking crackhead of a wrestling fan. And the only people that are doing that are yeah. absolute losers who would hate John Cena with everything in them. Well, also, like, if it's three hours of just straight up talking, like, what? Kids aren't going you know, to that. Yeah, I'm not yeah. I'm going to that. Yeah. You so have like to be like a teenager to an adult to go to yeah. that. Your average crowd in like Florida or whatever, whatever random cities that Raw has been on are like, at worst, it's 50 50 when Cena comes out. Usually he's yeah. generally cheered and some older people boo him, but like it's it's nowhere near this bad. Yeah. They, this I'll, is the beginning. It's just going to get worse from here. Yeah. Then we and, had. Yeah, and as a. A pe- more and more people just stop watching wrestling period yeah especially during this time the people that uh are stuck watching because they're uh absolute losers that uh should Hate really themselves. stop <laughs> yeah, yeah 
can't give up like their their one hobby. So yeah, have podcasts about it, you yep. know, whatever that kind of thing. You yeah, know, like, spend money going back obviously. and intentionally watching two thousand six wrestling. Yep. For some you guys, what? you guys don't have to do this. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what what are you talking? Huh? Oh my bad! I had a conniption. I had a conniption. Sorry, guys. Can you please? That was Ty, You told me you had Ty. You told me you had my family at gunpoint two weeks ago. Oh no, that's that's uh, you don't have to do this, Ty. That's you were the, going that's to my kill boss. my baby girl. No, that's my boss. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. But anyway, so, yeah. Uh, speaking of killing people, Vern Gagne. Whoa. Oh wait, no. I... Vern Gagne. Yeah. Before we get into Vern, it's Vern Gagne. Gagne. Before we get into Vern, Refrigerator Perry comes out and he and he says a little sweet promo. He just says, "I don't know why I'm here, but I'm just happy to be here, and I'm really happy you guys uh, appreciate me." And then the crowd just didn't know, even though they're Chicago fans, they they were like, "Yeah, cool. All right, Perry's here." Yeah, uh, then mean, we got the crossover the... between your average wrestling fan at this point and like a sports fan is kind of, I would imagine kind of low. And then we got Laverne Gagne coming out, and uh, Greg Gagne was there, and Greg Gagne was pretty cool. Like he was uh, talking about the history and stuff, and how you know Vern trained a bunch of wrestlers and like that you would know today, and everyone kept guessing at fucking Hulk Hogan the whole time. I don't Vern get it. Gancho, hey, train Hulk Hogan. Well, I don't know if he trained him, but he was in his promotion when he like before he got big. So it was like a you know passing of the torch kind of thing. So so like maybe maybe, maybe I think he did. Um, but yeah, Greg Gagne was very very poised, very very astute. I think he's voiced over a lot of stuff because I've recognized his voice from somewhere, but I can't remember where. Uh, he introduces his dad and his dad. Is very old at this point. I think he would had dementia. Let me double check that real quick. He had Alzheimer's, yes, because he looked very confused here. He's talking, and it kind of fucked up to put this dude on TV at this. Yeah, point. he was. He was like, I don't know why I'm here. I'm very happy that this promotion has helped me. Or like, actually, got in contact with me. Blah blah blah. Uh, I'm happy about all these people. Wrestling. He mentions Hulk Hogan again. Uh, AJPW. He didn't really even talk about his wrestling career more than him being an AWA man, which I don't care about that. I'd rather hear his stories about when he wrestled and when he Bro, was a frog man. He was a, he was a frog man in the World War II, like an early fucking SEAL. Like I don't yeah. give a shit Bro, about awesome military about. stuff, but that's crazy yeah, that he's that early. <laughs> sorry, that. No, sorry. <laughs> ah. But, I want to hear about uh-huh. this man blowing up mines in the ocean. Yeah, he had nothing to really say, and then he he comes back and he goes to his son and goes, "What? Oh, what promotion am I in? Okay." <laughs> and then he then he gets back on the mic and goes, "Mr. Man is a very lovely fella." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I'm like, he doesn't even know where he's going in the Hall of Fame. I just really like that when Crystal brought him out. And then he killed somebody in his nineties. Allegedly. Nobody remembered. Nobody. No, it's not allegedly. He killed him. <laughs> he just didn't know. We don't, know. We don't know that. He might have died from the fall. He did die from the fall. But it was yeah, ruled a homicide. No, no. The we fall doesn't kill you, bro. It's the sudden stop at the end. Yeah. So, crazy. <laughs> True. Crazy is where we be, got. You have to be drinking just enough to be lucid. Have your yeah. body relax at the fall. We got SD Jones had a very sweet, very sweet, sweet promo for Tony Atlas. A lot of cool stories about them lifting weights, beating people over um, like the whole world. Like me and Tony would travel, and Tony would lift six fifty, go to the next place. We go and lift six sixty, go yeah, to the next is, place, this and we. Is me and Aaron <laughs> talking about what we do. Yeah, yeah. it was really cool what to hear you? about because I just never heard that story before. Uh, SD ends up passing away sadly two more uh, two years later, so it's really cool to even have him up there. And I think he was in the first match of WrestleMania. I'm pretty sure he was. Yes. He lost the. Oh well, he was at. Uh, he lost the King Kong Bundy in nine seconds at WrestleMania one. Cool to even be on that show. King Kong Bundy. Yeah, man. In nine seconds. If you've seen that man, Tony Atlas comes <laughs> out. He's praising America. He loves USA. He's happy to be here. He loves Hulk Hogan. Um, he's very, very good guy. 
And we'll go through this really quick. Chris Benoit comes out. He uh, says, my family, you're next. Rey Mysterio's here in his fucking right? Yankees. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's so He's, real for that. Yankees, Yankees fucking suit. Rey Mysterio is here. That, uh, he said, Eddie gave this to me. And I'm so thankful for Eddie. And uh, then Chavo comes out and he's like, I love my uncle. He's a little guy that always did the good thing. I saw good things and all the bad things. And he would uh, spray paint off expiration dates because he was told to do that at the store he worked at. And he realized later on that, hey, wait a minute. I eat this food too. And that was, that was one of Chavo's stories. And then uh, Vicky comes out and Vicky is Vicky. <laughs> Uh, she'll never do anything bad in her life. Nope. Never ever. I know her husband just passed like a little bit ago, but she'll never do anything bad to any of those daughters. So nope. we'll move on from that. Rest yeah, in peace, Eddie. Sit on that one, buddy. I'm not. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin is here, and he keeps fucking riling up Hulk Hogan, and then he says, "Sherry, I want to fuck you." I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not joking. Yo, Sherry, I heard you talk about the blondes. What? I heard you talk about the blondes. What? I want you, Sherry. You think you think you can handle me? He really says that? He says something like that. He's like, Sherry, come be me backstage. She's married at this point, too. <laughs> he's a freak. And then he's like, all right, he's here's Bret Hart. Marriage doesn't matter, Don. Bret Hart yeah. tells his stories about how he's... Uh, thankful to be here but then he just kind of doesn't care about him and he goes off about his dad he won't stop talking about his dad he talks about his brother he talks about his family he's like my dad owned the uh, or we, i got into wrestling because i went to a emsler wrestling promotion and he what? just starts say the the little people Brad hard cut a promo on how his dad is dusty roads and he's like you don't fuck around with little people but he's not saying little yep. people He's like they'll they'll fucking spin you around and throw you around, and that's pretty much. It was a forty minute speech by Bret Hart, and then he didn't show up to Mania twenty two. So now we're back in Mania twenty two. Everyone I just named and mentioned is here celebrating, except for Bret Hart. Why was Bret, was, Bret, Bret was building a, a jade statue to Chinese uh, warlords in this basement in the dungeon. Yeah, so true. <laughs> He, he was busy playing yeah, Jade Empire I don't, on his Xbox why. right now. I don't understand what the whole bit of that. Like, why even show up to fucking the Hall of Fame if you're not going to show up the next day? Like, did you have something better to do? That's just a snub of Vince McMahon. Yeah. He was busy playing Jade Empire on the Xbox. Maybe maybe Vince was like, hey, if you're going to show up to the Hall of Fame but not Mania, like, I'll be pissed off. And he's like, okay. Because he wanted to have uh, Bret Hart in this fucking stupid little gimmick match the next day. But uh, but Bret Hart still got paid in full, brother. You know he did. He got that check. He didn't mention Bill Goldberg being stinky either and stupid. <laughs> in, a, in a rare moment. <laughs> yeah, Goldberg must have been within a three-state area. That's why he wasn't talking shit. Oh, of course. Um, he knows Goldberg would fucking rip his asshole apart. Goldberg uh, got his ass beat by Jericho, uh, man. Goldberg got his ass beat by Jericho. <laughs> but yeah, but Jericho's a better wrestler than Bret Hart. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Tyler, U.S. title match. It. What? What? That yeah. Chris Benoit is here. Yeah. yeah, Chris Benoit comes out in the sh um with the mustard and ketchup fucking pants. For real. For real. Yeah, for real on his pants. Yeah, we had such a hard time deciphering what that said. Well, because we thought it meant like it said a real or something at first. Somebody said b real for, at one point. For a mania. There hasn't been that many cool entrances other than Carlito fucking flopping on the floor, which I guess that counts. But nobody really had some shine to their entrance until JBL shows up and the whole floor gets raised up as his limo comes in. And it was a really cool segment. Yeah, really cool as JBL comes out. And, you know, Chris Watch just... Nothing. No, no yeah. pizzazz. That's his whole character, I guess. Uh, well, yeep. Uh, the JBL match comes out fine. of his limo with his. Hold on, hold on. I gotta mention something here. Cool. I, I mention it every time. God bless Julian. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're goddamn right, brother. That's, that's right. Expand, expand on that. 
They we put got... the WrestleMania fucking oil on or something. Yeah, yeah. she was shining. Oh, she was running the ropes in that limo. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I don't know. Chris Benoit is the U.S. champion. JBL's here. He wants his belt because Chris Benoit broke his hand like a couple weeks ago. But he's now healed. And he's like, Benoit, I'm going to beat your ass. And he gets put in a cross face him, like immediately. He doesn't tap. He gets out. JBL tries to taunt him. He goes to do some like Eddie Guerrero shit. Benoit gets pissed. Goes for his three amigos, and that gets blocked. Actually hits it right after, and the fans go crazy. Because I don't know why fucking the fans are so into Chris Benoit at this time. It's just Eddie they didn't know. He's a little guy and good wrestler. There was really nothing to stand out about this match. I'm not really no. quite sure. Uh, Chris Benoit goes for a crippler cross face. JBL gets out of it, rolls over, hits the ropes, gets the title. And we have a new United States champion, JBL. The Canadian cheats at some point. She does hit Benoit. Does she? She does. She hits she, she, him with the clipboard. Yeah, oh. she hits him with the clipboard. God, how did I and, forget that? Well, I can tell you why we forgot it because we're all sitting in the same room yelling about like Jersey Mike's or something. Yeah. yeah. Can I have uh, the raw Actually, down correspondent uh, judge here? Can I have him? T- uh, he typed out a bunch of stuff we said. Sonographer. <laughs> Sonographer, that's it. Uh, uh editor Ty, where do you, how are you on the fucking cut button here? Uh, uh he can't uh, hear you. Okay. Well. All right. So editor I'll start, Ty is not up there. I'll start with the stuff that's He's gonna make it there. into the episode. Uh yeah, I can't confirm they were knee deep in the Jersey Mike zone. Also, uh personal note, this might have been this is like probably I don't know, maybe the vibe was off. It's like one of the worst Chris Benoit matches I've ever seen. Which means it's still like okay. Because That's Benoit's fine. worst matches are better than a lot of people's best. But yeah, like this I couldn't I also couldn't really get into this. I it's the whole bit here is that JBL is trying to out wrestle Chris Benoit like on the mat, which is a fine story, but then it just means you get this big guy who I just want to see do big strongman stuff trying to do actual wrestling, and Chris Benoit has to slow down to, like, you know, make him not look like shit. So that sucked. Anyway, what we're all here for. Uh, the dumb shit Joe said, mostly. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, he, wow. Chris Benoit has a uh, yellow and red pants on, and Joe says, I hate when Chris Benoit comes out with the ketchup and mustard gear. It looks ugly. Uh, Joe, can you interpret your Eldred scrawlings of the Chris Benoit as the Silver Surfer? Because I had it written down, and then pre-show you told me I interpreted it wrong. So can you please direct the fine people uh, who listen to this show as to what the fuck you were on about? So referencing earlier at the top of this segment, basically, uh, the side of Chris Benoit's ugly uh, mustard and fake cheese and ketchup gear, uh, it says... uh, we couldn't really decipher what was happening because the match was recorded in 12p and we couldn't tell. There were words on it. We couldn't tell what it was like. Ariel, it was Beast, something. I don't know. It was the number four and then a reel down like the the side, the right pant of his like tights. And I chalked that up to like, why Why does, what does Chris Benoit for real? I don't think he's ever talked like that or said anything like that in any promo, uh, even with the limited time he gets. Um, I chalked it up to him just watching the Fantastic Four movie, and he saw the logo number four. He's like, yeah, 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 I like that. I'm a real Silver, silver Surfer head, you know? Because yeah, Silver Surfer, silver. yeah, yeah, he's all chrome and shiny, just like Chris Benoit's MRI. Yeah, just like his MRI, yeah. Yeah, oh. so that's that's yeah. why. That's what that is. The match is so slow, and I mean, stenographer got in and won. Yep. Chris didn't need to do this. <laughs> Yeah, it was fine. It was I didn't so care. As a, as a Smack Up correspondent, I didn't give a shit about this match. It's just... It, I've said it before, if you've seen a Chris Benoit match, you've kind of seen like all, all of them. And the one against JBL is, is not particularly yeah. impressive because he's not... Uh, as JBL says, he's a wrestling god. He's really a wrestling fitter, though, in actuality. 
He's also claims he's like 460 pounds, which I don't believe. That's like un <laughs> it's not possible. This man, goes the number goes up. This man is built different for America. Yeah. All right, uh, important thing there in this match, uh, butter chicken was delivered at this point, and it was oh. too strong for the bag that it was enclosed in. It fell and almost sh uh, just splashed all over Ty's floor. It was yeah, the terrifying. Driver it, the the, the rice bag. hit me. The rice hit my kneecap for a while. I was scared for my life. <laughs> It was very yeah. sharp rice. Uh, when are we gonna get the butter chicken review? Are we gonna do that now? Or we can do. Yeah, we can do a little, butter yeah. chicken beatdown review. Yeah, the, you, the know you know what? You know what? Let's let's get the butter chicken beatdown review right now. I went home and took a crazy quick, shit. I'm, yes. I'm looking at a. I pulled up like a review of what happened during this match because I don't remember. This is guy's comments on this match. The main like point that he has. Is um Jillian has a nice rack in the background I see for her. Can you DM him on the forum he's posting if he had butter chicken that week twelve years ago or whatever? Does this years match ago. does this I, match make people want butter chicken? <laughs> I guess I can talk about my nightmare of a night. So I, I everyone everyone leaves. I get in the house, my feet are freezing. It's winter. That's fine. I put on some socks, my hands are cold. I go, damn, that sucks. I lay down. I watch some White Lotus with my wife. Yeah, these I go to the bathroom. Are tough. I go to the bathroom to take a fat shit because this butter chicken is beating me up. My hands are still frozen. My feet still frozen. I go, damn, why is my head hot? I go to take my thermometer. I put it to my head. 100 degrees. I go, oh, my God. I was fine before. Why am I fevering up? And I take some uh, Tylenol. I have to shit again. I go to the bathroom. I blow the bathroom up. What? My feet are still frozen. What? what? I go to the thermometer again. I'm 98 degrees Fahrenheit. I go, what? <laughs> and I go take another shit. What? <laughs> another shit. My hands are still cold. What? I go back. Thermometer says I'm 100 degrees again. 101. I go, am I okay? <laughs> Why am I fluctuating so much? What did this butter chicken do to me? What? Give you the beat down. And uh, and then I call Pete and I say Pete and he goes what? <laughs> and I go Pete. He goes what? And I say hey butter chicken. And he goes yeah, it's killing yep. me. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> huh? And yeah, and we we both died. My wife had a couple of butter chicken. She was at ninety nine degrees Fahrenheit and then just <laughs> went away. I don't know what the fuck happened because it fluctuated in like an hour span. Not gonna lie, that was the best butter chicken I've ever had, though. It was so good, and That's I will have it. I will have it again, and I, I will, will give them again. a good review because that was a fun experience. <laughs> White so people good. organs cannot handle the butter chicken. Why? Bro, I regularly eat butter chicken. This is a, this is a common occurrence, but I don't know why this time this place specifically has the the craziest butter chicken you'll ever have. But it was delicious, right? It was. It was. It was busting. so good. So it was, it was like the deal with the devil butter chicken. Yeah. You have to sacrifice the rest of the night in order to experience some really good butter chicken. Oh, so you're saying that was butter chicken brought to you by Harmburger? Harmburger? Tell us about Harmburger. Yeah. That's our sponsor today. Yep, Dave, no, let him cook. The sponsor of today is Harmburger, where you will have the best burger of your life. However, in finishing that Harmburger, you will experience immense pain. That's so true. Sure. <laughs> that was my insides exploding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Be I can't believe Jersey Mike popped my cherry. It was crazy. Now, <laughs> that Jersey Mike's crazy That's... inside Joe oh, Colon. <laughs> speaking of speaking of colon matches, here's the hardcore match. Well, I'm not. Well, I won't be able to narrate everything that happened. I'm sure Martin has that, but I'll definitely like pop off for my boy uh, Nick Foley. Pop off for him. I want to hear your thoughts on it. Mick Foley bullied by Edge constantly. Mick Foley was like, I'm a badass. Then he got a good guy, has the puppet. Then it's like, fuck you, Edge. You have released the beast. I'm going to kick your fucking ass. And he goes, goddamn ham on him. Sure, Edge ends up winning in the end, but nobody gives a shit. Mick Foley brought a good fucking show. We got tax. We got barbed wire. The man had bar a barbed wire belt under his fucking vest. So when Edge went to hit him, it fucking backlashed him. Uh, then he gets out the barbed wire bat. 
uh, pulls out the fucking tax, gets out the sock man whose name uh, fucking escapes me. Mr. Sacco. Mr. Sacco. Wraps Mr. Sacco in barbed wire and fucking (laughs) attacks Edge. Uh, I believe Lita tried to interfere like she does constantly, um, but uh, she got scared shitless uh, by Mick Foley. There was so much blood. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> I was there for it. Like, like, I'm sorry, good listeners, but I'm a freak. Like, I would be at the Coliseum watching these gladiators kill each other and get eaten by lions. We here uh, on so... Raw don't love Moda. All right, so like this match, it was a good match. Like, uh, they were going at it. Good moves, uh, good show. Uh, crowd was fucking loving it. At the end, they were chanting McFoley's name. They just, they just wanted more of him. That is all McFoley does. Is he brings a good show? Does not, ca- does not care if he wins. He is just there to give the people what they want, <laughs> which is fighting, blood, and just energy. And I was there for it i was i was at the edge of my seat all these guys were there they can attest to this i was at the edge of my seat i was loving it savoring it 10 out of 10 fuck lita though she has to stop being there that's what we love to see it's good to good to see emerald getting into it because when we started raw emeralds has very limited knowledge on wrestling or limited care even a better term and then the blood came and he go crazy and that's what it's all about man sometimes sometimes if you don't like catch style wrestling you just want to see a couple men beat the living shit out of each other and here's what we got two hall of famers and a hall of fame manager and wrestler going crazy awesome match absolutely i mean it, it that a uh, table spot is one of the most iconic in all of WrestleMania and for within good reason. I mean, I think people forget that like most of the match built around that spot. Yeah. All like is like uh, it's a high caliber match and Mick Foley in 06 should not be going as hard as he is, but man, he is fucking putting in the work. And mm-hmm. Edge is in his prime right now, so he it him and Lita are like killing it. Again, I thought that the even with the very short build for this feud, I thought that it was done well and it really kind of made you more invested because it, even though, like I said, even though the time was short, they were both incredibly engaged. You could tell that these two men did not like each other with every hit. This wasn't a wrestling match. This was a grudge match. And uh, I thought it was done well. It's possibly one of the best matches on the show. Hell I would yeah, say brother. it's the best match on the show. Let's be honest. Hell yeah, brother! Yeah, because... You can't say that after Candice and Tori. Come on now. We'll get to that <laughs> later. We haven't even gotten that far. Oh, we'll get there. But I oh, think... I, I totally forgot about the fucking table. They yeah, whip man. out this table, and they... <laughs> they douse way too much lighter fluid on this. Like, Mick Foley spreads off enough, enough on it, and then, and then he goes back to fighting Edge Lita... Comes out and is like all sneaky about it and puts more on the same spot. Like, okay, that's too much. You're not even spreading it out. Then they light the table on fire, lit as shit. Mick Foley goes through that flaming table, but still manages to get get up because that man is a uh, man myth, the legend, Mick Foley. It was that's a, just an iconic moment. So cool. And like they were going through fucking thumbnail, uh, thumbtacks, and fucking a bunch of uh, what the barbed wire bat early on. He was hidden behind the the steps. You weren't fooling nobody, Mick. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, all those thumbtacks, all all they do not clean out the ring throughout <laughs> the this name. entire show. Yeah. So we see later on people getting thumbtacks in their shoulders. I'm sure Taker got a couple thumb thumbtacks in his shoulder. At some point during his match, absolutely, good, good match, a lot of blood. Now I will say, people were after Mick Foley got through the flaming table. They're like, "Oh no, he's singed!" Like, no, the fire went out immediately. It didn't go through his clothes. He's fine. 
People do not know the laws of thermodynamics. Emerald, you got four degree burns on that. <laughs> no. <laughs> they had to take his skin He's off. <laughs> after and at That's the end of this match, I have to set up an epic joke that Ty insisted I write down because oh, no. I was writing down everything here. Do you remember what it was? Is it, is it the one with the camera? <laughs> Yes. You gotta say it. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you got it. Go ahead, Ty. You were so proud of this. You they... made me write it down. You set this up. Listener, this is going to be the most heavily produced joke we've had since the reverse Joe bit. Yeah, you see Mick Foley, skin's falling off, Edge getting up with a shit-eating grin, and they caught his ass in 240p. Pachink, pachink. And then you see the girl in the crowd fucking taking camera fucking pictures with, like, the dinosaur. Oh, yeah! I forgot! <laughs> Just the cameraman fucking hones in on this this Karen-looking-ass woman not s- with a shitty disposable camera. Not ding, since ding. LeBron James with the ca- flip phone have we seen such prehistoric content. I love it. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to say about this uh, iconic match with with the best? No, uh, well, I think that when Lita tried to intervene, he that she did also get barbed wire sockoed in the mouth. Oh so. yeah, she did get barbed wire sockoed in the mouth. Yeah, that was so disgusting. Hopefully she's, uh, totally, she's doomed for now. Yeah, we don't have we don't have Joe on Raw <laughs> down anymore. He can't say that she's full of semen or something like he'd said in the first five episodes. Oh, oh. maybe the latent effects of the barbed wire are why she can't pronounce anything on WWE pre shows. Oh my Ooh, god. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then I mean like we go from this to a fucking weird ass hallway bit. Booker T and Charmel are walking to their match. Um Charmel, God bless. Yes. Booker T. Um whatever Sherry said about you at the Hall of Fame. But uh <laughs> Yeah, so they're walking like down this hallway and they meet all the freaks or some of them I guess on the roster. And let's let's run over some of these freaks. So they got Paul Birchall who he's just vibing. Is a pirate. He's just a pirate. I, like he's not really like a freaky guy. He's just a pirate. So I don't know why he was there. It's they watched dodgeball, man. That's it. Yeah, and then you got Eugene and Ted DiBiase, and Ted DiBiase is doing what he does best, frauding <laughs> disabled people out of their money. What? And then he asks Booker. He's like, Booker. I mean, allegedly, of course. Allegedly, he goes, Booker, do you want to make a thousand dollars? And Booker's like. Uh, no, not, no, not really, I don't. Booker T at this point is like a millionaire. He doesn't need a thousand dollars. Yeah. And then probably the most foul shit of the night was uh, oh. Schnitzky. By the way, have, has Sh- Schnitzky's been on one episode as Raw at this point, and he got killed by Kane in like two seconds. Oh, wait, no, he fought RVD as well. Yep. So two episodes yep. he's been on, and now he's out there licking Mae Young's feet. Yeah, he's licking this old bitch's foot. And Moolah's like, fucking watching like too. It. Well, who was watching? Yeah. She seemed like she was trying to escape, but like she May- also was making no effort to escape. Why was her May Young feet didn't exposed? like it? Mula loved it, which is par for the course. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds like Mula, classic Mula. Yeah. And then Martin really wants to talk about Goldust. Oh man, this was probably the best part of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goldust oh. comes in with hot, bro. Where's our? I don't at? want to talk about <laughs> Goldust. Oh, <Hell, laughs> I got thrown too. <laughs> Goldust <laughs> comes in and he says, Booker, 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 I take a bite of your wiener. It's a little bit stranger. Oh, Booker, I got something I got to tell you, brother. Let's, and he gets up in his ear. I want to, instead of lick feet, you got to lick. Come here, brother. Like no, no, he said he's so he was, true. He was, he was trying to help him basically psych Feed up Booker T because the boogeyman is so strange. We're in the he we're in the Booker. strange man. Uh, we, we entered we entered the Twin Peaks hallway here, where there's just okay. a bunch of weird guys bow, 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 doing weird things this, with absolutely bow, no bow, context. This segment, for those bow, who bow, haven't bow. seen it before and don't know much of Goldust, this is why uh, Dustin Rhodes is the best of the Rhodes children. He was yep. Was he cross dressing? I think he had a. Uh, he was yeah. wearing the wig. He had the wig he on. Was. He had the the. Gown well, it was like on. a cherry curl wig, though. It was so bizarre looking, just because it. I don't know what he was going for with that. Like he didn't. 
didn't look right. It was so it was so those, like bizarre. It's it's it was something. For those who don't know, like a much about like Dustin doing like the book or the uh, the gold dust gimmick. He literally was so dedicated to the bit that he said he would get fake or no, like he would get real breast implants to like make the bit more real. And Vince, like Vince McMahon, who's a known sex pest and a weirdo, and just a weird That's guy, true. was like, uh, "Too far." What? What? What if you? No. How about you? Don't do that. <laughs> that that coward didn't let him get fucking boobs. That coward didn't let Bob Lashley gain four hundred pounds, <laughs> and then start a, like a like a training arc to lose it all. That would have been. I hate so Vince McMahon for him. those two things only. He needs his fat Mac arc, dude, for real. It would have been so good. <laughs> it would have been the good. coolest shit of all time. Bob Lashley finds it so easy to be Jack that he wanted more of a challenge, and Vince refused you, to let him do it. We could get Triple H to probably let him do it, right? I mean, I know he's like Bobby Lashley's like fifty-seven years old now, but I think I, he could do it. I think if the, this segment would have actually meant something, and this is me fantasy booking a dog shit segment just because but if boogeyman was doing backstage segments on smackdown harassing all these people it oh, would have made a lot awesome. more sense that these people are here because what does this have to do with boogeyman and why yeah, is it like, like no, i like, get okay, their freaks come on, come on. You know what the deal is, Well, bro. see, the problem here is that the people, for su- I don't know if the people like the Boogeyman, but they don't hate him because I don't hear boos. No. Or they just pipe in the, the Boogeyman laughing. So you would like think that room. these are the freaks that hate Boogeyman because he is, like, a freak? Or, like, like Boogeyman because he's a freak, but he's not a part of that group. And they said, Booker, I want you to win. Why do they want Booker to win? Well, they're trying to get, they like, like, Booker. They're- they're What's... telling Booker to become a freak himself. Yeah, he's yeah, got to become strange. It order, doesn't make in order, sense. <laughs> in order to win, you need to become. You need to embrace the freak in you. Yeah, and because he didn't. We and know he... what happens. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into that next. How doesn't that make sense, Tyler? Yeah, well, no, because Goldust, he's like, you got to be strange, Booker. You got to take those worms the boogeyman you does, shove them and you got to shove them in your. your you got to shove them in your. That's what he said. He says you got to shove them in. It's got to go some kind of And he goes, brother, <laughs> let me get up right in your ear. Yeah. Yes. And then Booker ran away. <laughs> yeah, Booker ran away respectfully. This is a coward. coward. This is not strange. Uh, Man. And then, Oh, no, Schnitzky, Schnitzky goes, <laughs> that was not my fault. Sure thing, <laughs> big guy. <laughs> so, you back to like fucking old women feet. Was Mae Young into this or not? Because when Snitsky was licking her feet, she seemed really upset about it, but then she was hanging out with him at the end. <laughs> yeah. I... But but she was also sitting down with her shoes off, so she Truth. was willingly put her, yeah. took her shoes off and gave it to Snitsky, because it didn't look like he was, like, gripping her up. Yeah, and why was Moolah watching? I... Every yeah, was... hotel got the Moolah chair. This Go was check. the best segment of the night. <laughs> this was the best thing that happened tonight. For someone that wants to your find to out, watch it. anyone that wants to find out why Mula was watching, check out the Dark Side of the Ring season two. You'll find no, out why. <laughs> no, anybody who wants severe depression and to be really angry, check that out. Yeah, fuck yeah. Mula. Agree. Yes. Yes, he did. We got <laughs> who's <laughs> worse, Mula or Vince? Honestly, Mula. Yeah. Mula was an actual pimp. Mula, like, let's just say Vince did a lot of shitty things. Vince? Mula set back women's wrestling for 30 years and did shitty things and uh, was prostituting out her students. Yep. And was uh, emotionally in uh, manipulating them into staying. And her, and her husband was also like. And her husband was doing it. it. And she was yeah. good friends with Grizzly Smith. Another. Uh, um, check out that dark side of the ring, too, if you want to be very depressed. Oh, that well, one's e- yeah, that one's even worse. Don't do if that. We, if we dig into who they're also connected with, I think we can say Vince is worse. But, like, it just everything Moolah did is just terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah. But... Moolah, actually, you know what? When I die, I'm going to go to hell to find quite a few people. One of them, Chris Benoit. Two of them, Moolah. Hey, Naram, brother, she's not down there with you. She's up no. there <laughs> in heaven. No. Whoa, hey, whoa. <laughs> hell just gained another demon. She's in super hell. That's, my, that's why she's not there. Handicap she's match coming up. She's even further down there. 
Boogie uh, Boogie Ula's Man right down here versus He's even further. <laughs> Booker T and Charmel are here. Fuck you guys. Booker T and Charmel are here. Editor Ty's not here. up there. He's down I'm gonna, there. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so Booker T immediately. Buddy! <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you shut the door? Pete, can you please shut the fuck up? <laughs> I was gonna get started with the next bit of new dogs gonna poop on the fucking carpet. Hey! <laughs> leave her out of this. <laughs> Booker and Charmel are here. Charmel, respectfully. Booker God is bless. going underneath the ring. I don't know why he's doing this bit. He knows he's fighting him. You don't have to fucking try to find Boogeyman. He's gonna come Dude. to the ring at some point. So you got this handicap match. Charmel doesn't know how to wrestle. Maybe she does. I don't think she was ever a wrestler. I think she was a WCW Nitro girl at one point. Big ups to that. Probably. Uh, it's so real. Booker, he had some nice ring gear on. I admit it. I admit it. They look they look pretty good. They're yeah, matching. They're red with the gold trim. Uh, Boogeyman hey. comes out, and he's he's sloppy. He's got his cane, his magic cane. He's got his clock. He smashes it over. Uh, whatever the production team decided to do was let's do a little red f- smoke, which they usually do, but it completely clouded over the whole ring, and it gave it this cool look for five seconds until you realize you can't see anything. So they're having this match. You can barely see Booker because he's got red on, red and gold trim, you can't see. He lets him. Charmel start the match, but I think it's hilarious. Well, that Charmel so starts, awesome. <laughs> and then he, he bops him in the back. Yeah, he bopped him in the back of the head, and then tagged tagged himself in. It was really cool. I like the the little mind games he pulled on him. But Boogie, he's a little too strong for you guys. Um, after he kicks out of the bookend, he beats up Booker, and then uh, Booker somehow gets tagged out at some point, and Charmel is in there, and. Booker or, or Boogie decides it's worm time, guys. And he yeah, just Charmel nearly uh, gets a sneak attack and with the staff of power. We have but... to add Boogeyman to next Boogeyman's week's episode. Our next Smack Ups episode, we're gonna have the top five sex pests in wrestling, and Boogeyman is definitely gonna make that list because he assaults He's somewhere on there. Charmel for, sure. for the second week in a row by kissing her on the lips. And shoving like worms ace. down the throat. Very bad news for Bo- Boogie Man. But you'd think... Booger Man. you think Booker T is going to capitalize on this and avenge his wife. Alas, Boogie Man no. chokes him up and picks him up dual-handed and then falls down on it. Kind of like a dual-handed choke slam, pow- like Spine Buster combo. Just the worst finisher you've and, ever seen. And gets the pin. And Does it even have a name? Because I, I know it's his finisher. It's like a choke slam, power bomb, or something. No, but like, do they call it anything? I think it's they call the ass fuck bomb or something. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. yeah. The ass fuck Booker, drop. Boogeyman gives him the ass fuck drop power it, bomb. It is just the fall forward choke bomb, as a yeah, pro wrestling fandom. Wow. I really wish he would have went with his boogie slam finishing move, but he didn't <clears> do that. The boogie woogie. The boogie slam. Or the his boogie woogie would have been good. Or the good night. That's yeah, his finishing that's, that's move. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, that match was really bad. Like, as somebody who just said the show was good at the beginning. That was my match and of the night. Every, every time, every episode for the past, whatever I've been editing, I say this is the worst show ever. Mania 22 was great. And now we have the one dud. And it really was just because Boogeyman went over. Because they can't have the man lose. So Charmel gets assaulted, Booker gets embarrassed, and they gassed him up beforehand with this whole segment saying, join the freaks. He didn't join the freaks. And then Boogie well, Man killed him. So what was the point of this segment? Boogeyman is not going to go anywhere. They're not going to book this guy any fucking better than what they've done for the past three months. We've been watching him do backstage promos, uh, harassing JBL, and then forgetting about JBL. And then he's been harassing Booker for the past two months for this shit to just end in three minutes. I'm not saying this should be a five-star match, 
but why the fuck is Boogeyman getting put over in this situation? Probably because there was like a real plan for the Boogeyman, but... Can they please give Booker something? Okay, Mania? so I'm looking, I'm looking at it right now, and I don't know if this is true. Hmm. Um, allegedly, um, the Boogeyman had a bicep tear at a house show just before Mania... Which is why the match was so wow. short. He had it repaired straight after straight after the event, and this derailed his push. That's mm. crazy. So maybe we won't see him after. But like, why have him win still? If he had his bicep tear, they could have done a lot less than have him pick up Booker with a bicep tear. That's actually impressive. He might have. He might have been hiding it, Marty. For all that, all for you, know. for you <laughs> picking him up like that, Marty. That's impressive. The first thing the booking uh, as a. That wouldn't be the first time the boogeyman. Did say did something. Yeah. Yes. He's the boogeyman is just really like his whole career is weird because as we mentioned like while we were watching this, he lied about his age to get on Tough Enough. Yep. Got found out and kicked off. Yep. Then gets signed. Only to then have like a short run that gets like derailed, and we can say I guess because of injury. But then he. He's maybe there for like what two years or so, and then he's on, and then he's on like a legends contract. This this is what's gonna fuck you up. It's weird. He comes like he got he came like last he year. Comes? We did, yes, he comes. He comes. He comes. He he was he was on Raw at some point, and then they brought him over to SmackDown because of the CW shit that they were gonna do, and then all this shit happened with his injury, fucked up his push, and then he was there till two thousand and nine, allegedly, two thousand nine. I love a bag getter. And then he came back and is on the he Legends. Came? He came. He but came. yeah, this match was bad. I didn't really know the context of his injury beforehand, but they could have fixed it by having Booker win. Because especially if he is if he is injured, have the injured guy lose, and then you don't have to see him for a while, and you forget, and then he comes back, and you're like, oh yeah, shit. And so now you have Booker being depressed. Which I guess we'll see on SmackDown. I don't know. Well, well, I don't even know what the fuck happens on SmackDown after. We'll see this. how they'll figure this out. But yeah, that match was shit. Uh, any of the Raw they'll boys want to just tag in for like f- ten seconds and just say their piece on this match? Eh. And- no. What do you guys think of the Boogeyman? Is he a compelling character to you, or is I he just it. a Vincent Kennedy McMahon freak? Yeah, he goes the Boogeyman, and he's like made out of worms or whatever. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, you he, got it. You got it. He's again. just he's yeah. just like a he's like a late game Resident Evil boss. Yeah, he get the worm out, I go crazy. That's it. <laughs> there's still as Emerald put it, there's so much worm goo everywhere. And now it's time for the women's championship match, which by far has the best story going into this easily. 100%. I I can't believe it. There's a lot of story that we haven't watched on because apparently this has been going since whenever in 2005 because they were showing bits in the promo leading up to the match where I don't remember it very far ago. <laughs> um, they unfortunately did not mention Jack. Big ups to my man, Jack. You deserve better wherever hell you are. Uh, it's probably still in jail. He's probably, yeah, probably still in jail. Can't be shaking Mickey James like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this match was awesome, and I want Nico to yell about it. All right, Trish Stratus versus Mickey James. As that was already said, this has been going for a long time. As long as we've been watching it, it's been about three months, and again, the story has been perfect. It's been a very slow build with little details thrown across all the episodes. Right, and obviously at the round they ended heated up, but I the build was already great, so this was my most excited match going in. Um, and we get in, and they go at it, and once again, I mean it's Trish Stratus and Mickey James. These are two of the best workers, in my opinion, in the company right now, and they're doing an awesome match. And one of the things that you might notice if you're watching some of these old episodes is that generally. The crowd, when it's time for the women's matches, are not that loud. It's usually kind of treated as like, a, uh, I'm going to go break. do something else. Yeah. And the bathroom break. Uh, they will 
all in on this match. I mean, every second. I mean, move after move. And again, they were telling a great story. And um, again, uh, how do I put this? The ending, I thought, actually kind of came out of nowhere. Because honestly, going in, I did kind of think Trish was going to win this. I thought she was going to retain. But, you know... During the match, she makes one critical error. And while Mickey's down, Mickey gets her in the leg, and she lands right into the knee. Once that happens, I mean, it was Nick, it was Mickey James's game. And she came in, and right before she hit that final move, it's the infamous cut scene. I know earlier we talked about the infamous table scene. This is the infamous, we cut this off the uh, program scene. Where she yeah, goes it's not for the, the peacock episode, like it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. they go. For, she goes for the crotch, crouch, <sighs> crotch grab, which they show that. By the way, I I don't know why the next part gets cut, but they show this right. And what they cut is basically her going up to the camera, giving you know with her her fingers like the track sign, right? Like two by two split. She just sticks her tongue to it and licks her fingers which i thought honestly and you know i'm sure some people will have their opinions on this it was kind of like one of those vindictive great like f you trish moments i thought i i thought it added more so of course Wait, vince mcmahon was mad about it you're telling me it's not just a star trek like tribute yeah dude trek fans yeah like well i mean i think she was just saying shout out to cool. leonard nimoy more than anything else. I mean, maybe she was shouting out Spock, but it also, it then was a double entendre. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. you know what? You know, I'm actually happy Vince cut that out. I don't want no sexual stuff on my wrestling. Uh, don't don't show that, please. We still I'm have scared. the main event, okay? What main so, event? I don't know. Oh, we'll get there when we get there. But um, she hits that final move. She gets the pin. And Mickey James wins. And oh, honestly, fantastic. I thought it was great. She was super you know? over with the crowd, too. Everyone loved her. She, even was. Though she was playing heel. Yeah. No, she and she was great. Um, again, it was just a great match. And I mean, you know, again, I think most people would say Edge McFoley's better. But I think this is a strong contender, at least the strongest contender out of all the other matches. Martin, is this better than the New Year's Revolution match? I don't think so, but it is good. There was nothing strikingly like botchy or bad about this match. I just feel like it was all built around the the spot that got deleted from the network. <laughs> so yeah. it kind of sucks. And apparently that was, was unplanned, too. Yeah, it yeah. was very similar to the revolution match that this one had dirt and worm come on the floor yeah that was very disrespectful i wish they would have taken a little more time to clean that but yeah I, guys in addition to them not cleaning out like the tax or the blood there's also just worm dirt like this arena just gets scuffed. progressively more and more filthy yeah as the night goes on and to the point where like the sweat kind of cleans the the ring yeah, yeah it's nasty it was, dude it was Do wild you think wrestlemania of all shows you could bring a few extra canvases but they just don't <laughs> they, just they put the, they put the worm guy in the middle of the show yeah this happens all the time on fucking smackdown you <laughs> just you just get worm man make mess they can't clean it up in time and then the next match just is full of dirt <laughs> they've had a worm man for like a year how do they not have a contingency for this during mania like <laughs> well Whatever. At yeah. least when John Cena spent a month bleeding everywhere every show, it was on last every time, so nobody had to deal with it. True. That's true. Yeah, this this match was great, but... Yeah, yeah. it was one of yeah, the better on. women's matches. Hold on one second. Would you rather roll around in John Cena's blood or worm semen? All right, Emerald, take that. Emerald, please. Take what? No, I got it. Okay. I'd, rather, I'd rather John Cena's blood... Because then I could maybe get suffused with his power, like an old Greek gladiator sweat. Mm, I uh, see. Interesting point. Yeah, true. Like, because the worm semen might fuck you up a little bit <laughs> mentally. Yeah, 
But like, if I can get suffused with some of John Cena's never give up training in the Baron Tundra blood or whatever was going on, then you know, yeah, it you might can. just be upside. Yeah, you can't. You stop have had that. a tri- You have had a tricep bubble for like three years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Why I want to go away? Why do they let him suffer? I don't know. Mr. McMahon is now backstage. Mr. McMahon is on his knees with his family. Oh. Shane is... I don't know what Shane put on, but he looking like me at my wedding. He got the, the black suit, orange tie combo, and I'm like, that's right. That's my guy right there. And then, you know, Stephanie and Linda are here. Why is Linda here? Um, I don't don't they hate each other? Family. No, it's fine now. Why? Well, they, they, uh, they do hate each other, but also you know, my I wife. don't. Yeah, Linda hasn't been on Raw. I assume she hasn't been on SmackDown. I don't no. know she would be. She was they're, at the Hall of Fame now. She I, needs to be on. She's running for the Senate or whatever, brother. Maybe I don't know. You know, it's just a, a tangent, real quick. Especially going to the Hall of Fame, it is very strange to see Shane, Stephanie, and Linda at the Hall of Fame especially with Triple H there, but no Vince. I guess it makes sense because he's running, like, the backstage. But, like, they're yeah. trying to talk to him like, we love Vince, and they cut to the crowd and they show the McMahon family without Vince. And then you yeah, see Vin- him for the first time this week, and he's orange. <laughs> he's Yeah, Vince, <laughs> A, is running the show, and B, like, like, apparently, oh, God, he, apparently he never wants anybody to talk about him during their speeches or, like, thank him for anything, and he gets legitimately pissed off if they I do. See. Yeah, that's why it was weird when Vern mentioned Vince, and then he had to like get pulled back, and then go back to saying Mr. McMahon. <laughs> it was so strange. I didn't know why he did that. Yeah, he's like, I don't Vince. The, the, allegedly, the thing is, Vince doesn't want to take, like, take the moment away from people or whatever. And he that's asks fair. Whatever, buddy. But, but yeah, wow, he what, a, what a great guy. Him. I'm sure this whole never thing is, is him picking his like favorites. And putting him in like a Hall of Fame, and he doesn't like it you, when they him. Do you mean to tell me Vince McMahon is a hypocritical weirdo fuck boy? No. Crazy. Anyway, well, boy. what do you mean by that? So, yeah, so Vince in hot dog regalia, uh, extremely, extremely orange. Bro's dogged up. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the family are getting on me to pray, and Vince is like, "Listen, God, you hate me, and I violated every law you've ever made." Pretty, but I'm honestly, really successful. pretty funny. Yeah, but I'm really successful, so fuck you, buddy. Uh, and I'm gonna send your favorite son, Shawn Michaels, to hell. And that's the segment. So, that's pretty your cool. average Catholic pretty family. Have they been mentioning the whole Catholic thing before on Raw, or is it just starting today? Um, well, no, because they had they. It sort of took a while for that to kick off, but they mention um, it every so often. When when Vince and Shawn had that first sit down, where Shawn was like. Vince, buddy, what's the deal? In like February, I think of '06, mm-hmm. uh, that's the one where Vince was like, "I want you to do drugs again." I oh want you to be yeah, addicted, addicted and he to was drugs. like, "No, Jesus." Yeah, this I, lo- I love Jesus. Explicit. Yeah, this is the most explicitly God thing they've gotten into, but it they poked around it. Yeah, because Marty Jannetty, notwithstanding. Yeah, because Sean's bit earlier was about God, 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 God will do this, God will do that. So then uh, Vince is like, "He, he, he, God." I'm yeah. going to make fun of Sean. But Vince is looking jacked out of his goddamn mind. Yeah, dude ate 17 chicken breasts and 18 raw asparaguses before he went out there tonight. Healthy and natural. And I know oh, Emerald's yeah. got a lot to say about that soon, once that match piles up. Because Emerald was on the floor going, fuck Mr. McMahon. So, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get yeah, to that find, soon. Yeah, find out about sure that. And how Randy Orton hits the hoo. The hoo. We got the Druids coming out, which everybody in the room just Everyone got up and Druids. left. Maybe got some pizza, yeah. got some, yeah. got some Mountain quick, Dew. Real quick, I've been to a lot of things where a large amount of people are at Ty's house or whatever watching wrestling. I have never seen less of a <laughs> shit be given about any wrestling match. Yeah, it was, this was this a rough one. one. I, I was about halfway through my fucking Jersey Mike's number 14, Mike's Way, or whatever. Number 9, dude. Uh, the number 9, Mike's Way. Double double vinegar, Locked double up. mayo. You don't get double... Uh, whatever, go on. 
<laughs> and I didn't care. Mark Henry stole the, the druids or whatever. <laughs> they brought the casket out. Um, by the Wait, time... Mark Henry stole the druid. I wasn't even paying enough attention. Yeah, he came that. out yeah, with I the just... druids. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, there you go. Yeah. He came out in a shitty Mortal Kombat 3 song, as Joe likes to call it. Yeah. It. Yeah, that's definitely uh, the, the beta song for the pits when you fight uh, Chameleon or whatever. It is crazy because this match should have been bigger than it was because going back to January, Angle fought Mark Henry at Royal Rumble. And that match wasn't that good. But Mark Henry has had good matches. I can't just say Mark Henry's dog shit because him and Ray have been cooking it up early in the year. And now we're here with Undertaker. And Undertaker had a little feud with Angle. And they had one of the best matches of the year. Actually, the match of the year still to this day up to April 06. You know, the best match of the year. Very good. And now you got Angle trying to play down to Mark Henry. And I don't know what was going on because I had to rewatch it. Yes, I rewatched it, unfortunately. And man, this is very this bad, very boring, dude. It's just it's two big men trying their ass off, but getting gassed in the first two minutes. Like I watched Taker go thirty minutes with Angle two weeks in a row, or like at least within the three weeks, and they had really good matches. And Taker did not get as gassed as he did. So what the fuck happened? Okay, we know it did happen with Kurt Angle because we know that Kurt Angle said, I'll fucking kill you. I'll kill you. Fair enough. If you, you don't go over there and put on match, a good match. Pussy. I think one cool moment was like Henry countered, uh, or was it he was up there punching Taker in the face and he gets last righted. And that ring shook. It was nuts, man. Like. Jesus Christ. Like, there was just, like, there's, like, no high moments. I can't even, like, go through, like, like, usually Martin has the play-by-play. He was taking a nap on the couch. Yeah, they do uh, a little bit of spots by... with, like, with the casket. Both uh, Taker and Henry end up getting rolled into it. Yeah, and the casket's, a... like, five feet tall. Oh, it's huge. They're, like, these are big men, and it's up to, like, their hips and they are both standing in it this thing has to be like 12 feet long yeah yeah henry henry uh nearly subdues the undertaker um he leaves the undertaker in the casket gets out and calls for the refs to close it but then actually, the undertaker does his thing where he raises his hand and... yeah there was actually a really cool spot that i forgot about because i did look over at the tv and i did forget about it but he henry gets out to the ring and he's by the casket and he's a little dazed, and Taker jumps over the ring and clears the casket and hits Henry. And I was like, "Holy shit, dude! I forget Taker can actually do that shit." And just yeah, fly. he was a, about five degrees from landing right on top of his neck, but he did he it. Lived. He did this ain't uh, you know, fucking Sean getting thrown over and cracking his back on the casket type beat. He just he cleared he, it. Crazy. He put that shit on for real. Yeah. Other than that, gets in the ring, gets tombstoned, pushes Henry's carcass into the ring, and uh, entered his Hall of Pain, I guess, because uh, the eulogy now has Mark Henry on it. Cage match has this match going about nine and a half minutes. That's surprising. On the timestamp, the entire like segment for this whole thing is about 30. So yeah. two-thirds of this match is entrances and exits. Yep. You know he's getting that. You know Undertaker's getting that WrestleMania entrance, brother. Come on. Taker to this point has not had a single good Mania match, and it's kind of scary because when he was going <laughs> over the like, Is it? yes, dude, because he had, ends up having like this WrestleMania career afterwards, where it's like a Renaissance period where he would fight. I mean, hold on, let's go in the future. Is hey bangers. guys, tw- 2024 time here. He uh, he wrestled at WrestleMania against Triple H. Really good. Shawn Michaels twice. One of the, you know, obviously people love that match to death. He can wrestle good. But from 1991 till whenever, 2006, he has not had a single good WrestleMania match. But that streak is so iconic. It's crazy. It's because, like, okay, people who watched WWE around this time 
I think like the main appeal of Taker wasn't like we can we care about the actual in ring stuff because we're nerds. Let's be honest. But like jabroni marks back then just were like, oh my god, he's big and he's like a dead guy, <laughs> and that was he, it. That's all they cared about. He so got when the he, lightning, bro. Exactly, to be honest, dude. it's not even that. Like the he the streak, the streak pushed him to being at like a way higher level. It did because it's like, oh, he's never been beaten. So who's like, how far is it gonna go? And who's going to beat him? And then yeah. it was, I'm sure, some young up-and-comer in the future who beats him. But... Yeah, so it's uh, like it's also crazy because they keep giving like dog shit opponents to him, too. It's just like you get Jake the Snake. Oh, my God. Jake the Snake's good. Fantastic wrestler. Cannot work well, with Taker. Well, the streak was an accident. It was with. an accident, yeah. But like if you uh, look back, it's like you got Giant then, Gonzalez. You got... But it was, it, was Mark's, it was Mark's on wrestling forums that really made it a thing. Oh, fair enough. And then enough. they decided to make it a plot point. Yeah, I guess. Wikipedia says uh, WrestleMania 18, the tenth match against apparently Flair, was the first time the streak was acknowledged. Yeah. Wow. We should do that as like a. We'll have when we get like 50 patrons, we'll do a watch along of that. We match. Got... We'll do a watch along of the streak. <laughs> I'd kill myself. <laughs> Listen, we'll make Martin play 2K14 and go through the 30 years of Taker or something. For 30. 1,500 patrons, you can watch my garage that I don't own uh, fill up with carbon monoxide live. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Why are we fucking Undertaker? Well, that casket match fucking sucked, dude. Oh, no, no. That match sucked. I'm just talking about why are we going from saying it sucks to, you know. What do you mean? I mean you know. Well, we just watched it. The, well, said, the two Undertaker. guys, yeah, fuck the Undertaker. two guys holding the casket, could okay. have easily done the funniest thing and closed it on both of them, but they didn't because they're fucking cowards. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then we got a... people that I wish were closed in the casket. Yeah, uh, Vince McMahon <laughs> is here. Uh, they have That's brought right. a framed poster of his muscle and fitness cover. Oh. Out to the ring, and Vince McMahon stands by it while just the most brown, tan, uh, orange man <laughs> I've ever seen. He is even more hot dogged out than Hulk Hogan, folks. Truly incredible. And he's got so some he's massive biceps, dude. It. He's huge. Yeah, he's giant. Yeah, yeah. Lots of chicken breasts and asparagus for Vince McMahon. That's right. Here. And then Shawn he's Michaels comes breast. out. Shawn Michaels comes out to beat his ass. Starts fighting him, gets him onto the announcer's table, takes JR's headset off and chokes Vince with the wire of it, smashes him with the ring mic. Shawn Michaels goes over, grabs the poster, smashes it over Vince's head. This old bitch is crumbling and dying three minutes into this match. But then the spirit squad show up. Oh, They uh, beat down Shawn because there's like 25 of them. And they do the thing where they where all the cheerleaders grab a part of your body and throw you into the air, but they just throw him 15 feet up in the air and then walk away so he lands right on his hip. It seems That horrendous. was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so he's down, and then Kenny goes to the top rope, whiffs a leg drop, shatters his entire ass, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sean is now up. Mitch comes over with a megaphone that is for some reason full of baby powder or something. <laughs> it's full of dust. As, yeah, asbestos, <laughs> I don't know. But Mitch whiffs a megaphone shot. Sean Michaels steals it from him, hits everybody else in the spirit squad with it, and then chucks Kenny over the rope to basically do a dive onto all of the other spirit squad. But with this distraction, Vince has nothing personnel Sean and just appears in the background, takes his belt off, whips Sean with it, starts choking him, and then he starts to taunt Spam as Sean is on the ground like, please, I cannot breathe, save me. He sets up for the sweet chin music. He gets caught, and then Sean gets the belt, and he starts killing Vince with it. At this point, Emerald sees a poster of Randy Orton and asks why Randy Orton is doing the hug. Can you please <laughs> elaborate on what that means? Uh, so, when someone does the hug, they're doing the weirdest fucking face they possibly can in some weird degreed angle. So he was just sort of like, <laughs> chin up, neck scrunched, just weird ass smirk on his face looking at the camera. Huh? There, there you go. 
So Randy yeah. hit the hug. Yeah. Sean back in the ring is set up for the sweet chin music. Shane McMahon appears and smacks him right in the back of the head with a kendo stick. Vince gets the ass out. Oh my. But Shawn Michaels Ooh. counters Shane oh. is trying to drag him over, but Vince has the ass out and isn't looking behind him. So he doesn't know that instead of Sean's face, it is Shane's face that is being shoved into the ass. Oh no! He is devastated. Oh. And then Sean punches Vince right in the dick, and Emerald legitimately gets on his knees on the floor screaming in approval. Yes! Yes! So excited. Sean uh, takes Shane out of the ring, produces handcuffs from somewhere. Or did Shane have those? I think Mm -hmm. Shane had handcuffs. Shane had handcuffs. So, So Sean handcuffs Shane to the ring ropes, chucks the key into the crowd, does the... Sean then hits the Shane dance, and Beats the shit out of Shane with the kendo stick. That was so Sean. brutal, too. Shane got oh, his yeah, ass beat. Yeah, it's bad, uh, but it gets worse for Vince. Sean uh, crawls into the ring here and just smacks him right the fuck over the head with a chair. I don't know if we got the hand up or not, but that chair is dented. Oh, yeah. And he should have done it a hundred more times. Vince uh, gets hit with a ladder that Shawn Michaels has now produced, and he is bleeding from... I don't think he bladed. I think one of these actually caught him in the head. So he's all woozy. Vince can't stay standing up long enough for Sean to hit sweet chin music. So Sean goes and gets some trash cans and a table. Sean sets Vince up on a table, climbs the ladder, and then he looks at the crowd, does the finger wave, goes, no, no. Climbs down, collects an even bigger ladder, which has to be like 20 feet tall. It's bigger it than insane. the ladder they used in the Money in the Bank match, I think. Yes. And Vince has just been dying on the table this whole time. Mm-hmm. So the big ladder is in the ring. Sean grabs the trash can, puts it over Vince's head, beats him up a little bit, and then throws him back on the table. Sean goes all the way to the top, hits the crotch shop on the top of the ladder, elbow drops onto Vince right through the table, the ref throws up the X and calls for help. Shawn Michaels heaves the ladder over the rope. He could have very easily hit somebody in the crowd with this. Everybody in the room was like, "How? that is not a thing you should do. But he, as seemingly everyone is fine. And I have written down here, he fights off the medical team who are dressed like the Joker. I forget <laughs> what that means, even though we're recording this right after the show happened, I swear. They were in suits! I, okay, they had suits on, I guess, just like the Jonkler. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and then he beats them up, sets Vince up long enough for Vince to stay standing, hits Sweet Chin music, and he wins. Yeah. Uh, I loved this match because it was all coming down to it. Uh, Shawn Michaels just constantly getting destroyed and beat the shit out of through match after match because Vince swore to drag him through hell and it was all living up to Shawn Michaels saving all that energy and rage to just fucking destroy Vince, uh, Shane, the Spirit Squad, fuck all of them, they die tonight. That's right. And that is what happened. Also, Shawn Michaels going (laughs) absolutely overboard dropping down onto a uh, a trash can coated vents from a 20 foot ladder knocking both of them out is <laughs> absolutely insane but yes i popped off for the suffering of vince mcmahon as we all should as yeah. we all should I, yeah no this like i mean there there are, there are problems with this match for sure you know maybe it went on a little too long Maybe it was a little too slow at points, but I mean, at the end of the day, it, this is one of the, it works through its classic formula. This is one of those matches where you just see it, as Emerald said, I, I agree with him on this is that, uh, this is Sean Michaels had been getting his shit kicked. He's been getting all of his matches manipulated. Like Vince McMahon's basically just pick it on him. And this is just him getting his fucking uh, come up, Vince. He just fucking brutalizes Vince McMahon in this match. 
and it's wonderful. I mean, I I've said it once, and I know some of my co-hosts disagree with me, but I mean, Shawn Michaels is one of the best of all time, and I thought he was tremendous. And if this was like a lower caliber wrestler doing this in this match, you know, I mean, this would not nearly be as good. I mean, this took Shawn Michaels carried this match, and I think he's what makes yeah, it. Yeah, because Vince cool. Vince can't work. So no. he just, you got to carry him through overbooked garbage because otherwise it's just <laughs> going to be stupid. Unless you get the Pat McAfee Vince match of what, last two years ago or some shit? And it was yeah. dog shit. Yeah, this, this, yeah, it absolutely. Like, it, again, it just goes to show how great Shawn Michaels is. I mean, like, could you imagine if they just put, like, somebody less in here? You know, it's just. Like, they you, really man. should have had Marty Jannetty in here. Oh, true. fuck. True, true, yeah. true. But <laughs> we know Yeah, where'd he, he go? Was. Yeah, where'd he go? Ah, don't worry about Marty. Point of the matter is, uh, this was... Uh, you could say it's a good match or not, but this was absolutely a fun match. I enjoyed watching it. I mean, I was popping off with Vince getting his shit kicked in. It's a good time. Yeah, I feel like if we didn't have such a good hardcore match earlier... This would stand out a little more, but in the grand yeah. scheme of things, people remember the hardcore match a lot more than this one. Just because mm -hmm. you can't you can't have two fucking street fight style matches on the same show. You're just gonna forget about one of them. To yeah. be fair, this also gets overshadowed by thing that happens later. Oh well, yeah, of course. Yeah, but I mean, and uh, it, it's just fun. It's like, it, it didn't need to be, like, the big memorable match or anything, but I at least didn't feel like I wasted my time. And if this was 2006, and I paid whatever money to watch this show, this match, at least, whatever part of it it is in that purchase, you know, I think it's whatever that, like, segment is, it's it's about worth what you would put in. Yeah, and as uh, Vince is getting carted off... A bloody pile of uh, shit, and uh, he flips off Sean as he's getting uh, put in the back. Yeah, this this so story ain't over. Off. No, but it's not over. Yeah. Fucking hell, we're here. Whoa. World heavyweight title match. What? We did it. We finally got here. Yeah, man. That You're was a. You did this to me mid coffee. We did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. That was a. Uh, My mid coffee. That was crazy what happened to Mr. McMahon last match. Can you do that? He was so swollen with lust, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. That yeah, was a little pussy destroyed, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> Kurt Angle's here, World Heavyweight Champion. Randy Orton is here. Light up my fire. And then you got Rey Mysterio. Wait, oh, is that P.O.D.? Oh, P.O.D. is here. And they're they're singing Booyaka, Booyaka. And then Rey goes, hold up. Booyaka, and, he leaves. Booyaka. and then he comes out in full headdress. This is the yes, first time we heard Booyaka, Alpha, Booyaka. No, it's been there, but um, it's been very mild. It's not the, like, it's what you're going to do when they come for you. Yeah, it's that thing. Booyaka, Booyaka, 619. But this one's like, Booyaka, Booyaka. Re the remix of the remix. Yeah. So, fantastic. We're here. It was a good match. Yeah, Kurt came down. It could have been pre better. Three straps down, takes the belt off, puts the straps up, takes them off again, puts them back up. Him with he's the straps crazy. down was like he's ready to go. This this should have been better. What happened? It was a good match, but this should have been a fantastic match given the talent. Well, um, <clears throat> we were like fifty Jersey Mike. The fucking DoorDash guy was like delivered like fifty sub uh, subs to us. This is the, at least the third time he's come to deliver Jersey Mike's. <laughs> he, he had to go drive back and forth to Jersey Mike's three times. Speaking... and I got a Jersey Mike, and then Dave got a Jersey Mike. Um, we ordered so much that the Amazon delivery guy today delivered to my next door neighbor. So I ran over there and I was like, "Hey, you guys might have got my package." And she goes, "Oh, haha." -ha. Yeah, the DoorDash lady went to your house yesterday. So I guess DoorDash was saying, oh, this guy, Ty, he's just ordering everything. And it doesn't even matter if it's Ty, it's going to go there. Funny story, what, Ty. What also. I don't know what they got. Apparently they came. 
They came. But yeah, Come. we're Tuesday. here. Uh, I love here. that idea. The big time moment that SmackDown has been waiting for. I think... SmackDown, can I get a booyaka here? Booyaka! Booyaka! Booyaka. There was there was That's a weird there was a weird bit because I guess uh, what was it? I had to make the people wait. Was it Orton came in? He snuck attack angle before the bell, and I guess Cole says on the mic he says it's not a DQ because the match started, like it hasn't started yet. But like, why would it? It's have a been triple a DQ threat. Who gives a shit? Point. Yeah, I don't know. Um, angle hit. Is Michael uh, Cole stupid. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Angle hit a couple Germans on people. I think he picked up both dudes at one time and just like clocked them. Yeah, he did. There was like a point I think where he grabbed both of them and like suplexed them. There was a bit where yeah, every single time Angle would put people in the ankle lock, they tap. Yeah, but the ref was getting distracted. He won the match at least three times. Yeah, it was it was disgusting. That's our king right there. That's our yeah, king. The, the, the very last time he had Orton in the ankle lock, he was wrenching it in. But um, Ray had the ref like distracted while Orton was tapping. So then Angle lets go of Randy and chases Ray out to the turnbuckle. Um, and Ray just hits some quick shit um, and, and punches uh, Kurt. They hit him with like a drop toe hold um, into the corner. And then tries to go for like a six one nine, but off of the turnbuckle. Then he falls, um, and I think the the crowd is like just the fucking crowd of dumb marks are yelling that he fucked up. Yeah. So Ray just gets up on the apron and gives him like a like a kick, like a Pele kick, which is still cool. Very cool. Uh, and then Ray tries to give him like a West Coast pop, and then um, I don't, know, I don't really slammed, remember. I was fight, I was fighting Jersey Mike's, bro. Yeah, I mean... Butter chicken beat down came for me. What, what, I can, what can I say? Like, for all this build, it was probably, like, the best built match, just <laughs> considering they made it the focus. They did all the Eddie Guerrero plot. stuff, which was not good. It seems like I thought they Everybody called Everybody involved kind of regretted it. Yeah, and now we're here, and Angle gets knocked out of the ring. He gets thrown out by Ray. He gets kicked out, and... Randy gets hit with a 619 and the West Coast pop. He flips him over and uh, he got the win. And now Rey Mysterio is our world heavyweight champion. And even more importantly, the crowd has yesified Rey Mysterio oh with, uh, with I dark skin. Yesified love, black Rey Mysterio. I love right yesified now. black mewing Rey Mysterio. Yeah, you need to, he does look this like a gonna... cat meowing. You need to put it like, you need to spin it like 30 times. I want you to just make it like a loading screen while we talk Boyaka, about the whole match. This and you gotta just keep the spinning. Song. It was so bizarre. Like, what what did they cook up in the lab for that one? Because somebody yeah. was was working so brain. hard. Listen, you I know, respect it. You know, you know what it looks like. It looks like those shirts you get at the mall where um, <laughs> they have they have like the what's the, what am I thinking of? They're like spray Airbrush. paint shirts. Airbrush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an airbrushed image of Rey Mysterio, but like he looks black and like he wants to fuck you. Yeah. Fans, if you want an airbrushed, yassified black Rey Mysterio merch, I don't know where do you go. You hit the link down in the description, redbubble.com slash. Dude, if we make that shit, I'll, I'll, I'll get. I'll buy. I'll put. I'll buy it right now. I'm buying it. Can buy I? It on can air. I do that? And yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I well, mean, that guy's like, not listen. See if if that is, guy is watching, probably dead. Guy He's watching. This guy watching. Mysterio's last match. Is this morally questionable? Yeah, sure. Are we stealing somebody's art? Probably. Hey, if you attended WrestleMania 22 in 2006 and watched Rey Mysterio win the belt and you brought out that yesified, <laughs> mewing Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio and you uh, want to get in contact with us, contact us at... Yeah, yeah. Links and yeah. socials down in the bio. Yep. Like and subscribe. Hit us up at our email. We have a fan mail email. Ty will link it and put it on the screen. Fair we enough. We have a TikTok. Did you, you guys heard it, right? You guys heard my uh, the email? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, If good. you email us right now, we'll actually mail you a pizza. Yeah. Yep. Not like we'll, we'll delivery. Like, we'll, 
we'll just mail it. Like we'll put I'll, it in a box and mail it to you. I'll I'll put like a DiGiorno's croissant crust pizza on ice and mail it to you. So as a, as a whole, SmackDown, it's over, man. That was mania for SmackDown. It's over, yeah. and then they never filmed another episode of SmackDown ever again. <laughs> that wow, that's crazy. SmackUp's over? Question mark? No, it's not. No, you guys thought you could get out of this. <laughs> your family, your family's still up. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hey, smack up ties back. Sorry, editor tie was a uh, going crazy right there. Editor tie. Well, you need to talk to that guy, buddy. Whoa, I'm gonna kill that guy. I mean, you yeah, bust his balls a little bit more. Yeah, fuck him. You need to crunch his sternum a little. I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all the next smack up. Yeah, uh, have a great. You're have retired. A great WrestleMania. More fan service in the next one, baby. Yep, and we're gonna come at you with more hot takes and a black Rey Mysterio shirt. Rey Mysterio, the champion, but we don't care about that. Here at Raw it? Down, we're ready to see John Cena getting fucking rubbed down. I want to see. He's oiled up. He's getting. Fucking sloppy with all the the fucking massage people. They're just rubbing them. They're rubbing them, and then we're like, okay, well, John Cena's got rubbed. What's Triple H up to? Oh, he's also getting rubbed down in the was it the fucking closet? That's like the smallest room in, I've ever seen. They couldn't give this man a bigger room. Yeah, he's in beautiful. a closet with a little uh, coat rack or something and a hanger where he's got I think two things on it. It looks like, it looks like the sort of New York apartment that a twenty-year-old guy would have. <laughs> but like, this is like one of your big stars. He's just chilled in a corner. Yeah. Well, he was barely on. It, I'm never mind. I'm gonna step it's, on what Nico's well, probably gonna scream about after we talk about the main event. But yeah, it's in accordance with how John Cena has been presented that he would just be in this shitty little locker as Triple H gets the. Full uh, butter chicken <laughs> beat down done to him. True. It's my yeah. names. So my y- names. you just had the first main event, and now we're gonna go into the second. I mean, the Playboy pillow fight. Did you guys remember yeah. this, guys? Oh yeah. yeah. We have another match: Candice Michelle yeah. versus Tori Wilson for the. For what are they fighting for? Because Nothing. they're <laughs> fighting for the right to be vindicated. What do you mean by that? I mean that these two women do not like each other. And But they were Vince's devils. Yep, but Toy Wilson wants to make Candace Michelle feel bad because she's been an egotistical bitch. And Candace Michelle wants Toy Wilson to leave her alone because she thinks she's better than her. And that is the story of this match, which, by the way, I thought was incredible writing. <laughs> um, <laughs> you could tell you had Hollywood actor like and writers in this trying to like guide this match. This was an incredible story. So they come in in ball gowns or cocktail dresses for whatever reason. You know, I, I think this one's a little, you know, it's a little esoteric. I think it's a little indie. I, I thought it was a nice touch to the match, right? And, you know, you got the bed, you got the pillows, which the, the pillows carpet. obviously represents you know, the carpet, which obviously represents the bombs in Iraq and all that stuff. Uh, and they just start going in on it, right? Yeah. They start kind of beating on each other. You know, they're throwing some moves. Tori manages to strip out Candace Michelle, which she is embarrassed. Again, showing the, again, the dangers of revealing yourself on Playboy magazine. Again, I I think this was actually a strong statement on how women sexually. Yeah, it didn't end the match themselves. either. Because I thought that was like a bra and panties no. match, but I guess it wasn't. No, it was not. It was a pillow fight match, which meant you needed a pin or submission. Oh. And you can use the pillows. And I guess you could use the uh, prop up for the magazine. And, you know. Basically, Toy dominates, you know, puts in some stuff. You know, he rests on the bed and stuff. Candice Michelle takes over. Then she's got the scissors. And you're like, oh, my God, is she going to stab Toy Wilson? Just like America has been stabbed in the back. But no, she cuts off the uh, cocktail ga- gown. Again, this representing a strategic issue at the time with the border crisis and abortion, of course. And then now they're both... With no clothing, going at it. Till, of course, Toy Wilson 
She comes in with the big move. She rolls her, gets the pin, and Tori Wilson was vindicated. Tori Wilson won it for America. And I thought this was the greatest match. That Rey Mysterio match fucking sucked compared to this. <laughs> John Cena versus Triple H for the WWE Championship. We're finally Let's here, go. guys. I, Let's go. I don't remember this a single bit of this match, guys. Is I'm the match really what? Guys. I got you because I got this. Uh, well, oh. I got the entrances because I could talk about the oh. entrances. Oh, my. So, Triple H comes out first. I'm glad they didn't do the, um, like, champion first thing. Champion should always come out last. Uh, Triple H comes out, comes up in the big chair with the smokes. And you're wondering, what is Triple H going to be today? Da-da-da. He is the barbarian. And he comes out and he's sitting there and he's looking mean. And then they restart his music again. And then he does his normal entrance as the barbarian looking mean. And I'd say it's one of the mid, maybe a little better entrances he's done for WrestleMania. So, yeah, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was a good entrance. I give it a 7. 7 out of 10. Then yeah. John Cena comes out. And John Cena, realizing that, you know what? I like Italians. Christopher Columbus is my hero. Women are still icky. Shows a video about Prohibition and the gangsters. And it's quite a long video. And you wonder, why is good man John Cena promoting organized crime in my wrestling show? <laughs> and I wondered that too. Until the very end where they were like, and they lived by these words, hustle, loyalty, and respect. And then they played some music, and a car came out, and um, it was like, and there's some notable stars from the future there, including everyone's favorite, CM Punk, which I know everyone's excited to see there. Get a little clap. Yeah, OVW guy. Yeah, OVW guy. This is the time. And there are a few others, but then... All with, like, pinstripe suits, hat, fedoras, Tommy guns, and then John Cena comes out. And possibly and, Dean Ambrose was there, too. Yeah, possibly. And Who? John Cena, I mean, John Moxley. Who? Huh? Uh-huh. Anyways. I John Cena comes out. The real John. I don't know who this Moxley fellow is, but he does a sound He's on nice. heat. Yeah, whatever. He's a loser. Point of the matter is, John Cena comes out, and he is in full incel mode. He's got the trench coat. He's got the hat. And, of course, he's got a Tommy gun because he thinks he's the badass, right? You know what? And I didn't actually expect him to shoot off a few shots, and he did. And you know what? And then John Cena's music kicks in. He runs to the stage. He does his entrances. And, you know, as far as entrances goes, I thought it was popping. I, I thought... This was very poppin' entrances. I give John Cena's an 8 out of 10. I thought it was good. And but, then the rest of the match happened. Well, hold on. The crowd saw right through his incel shtick because they started booing the hell out of him. Yeah, they did. They were saying, I, fuck I you, Cena. I I don't blame you. And let me tell you, because uh, we talked about this going in, and I, I'll leave it off at that until the end. Uh, this match... I, I've even said on the episodes I've been on, uh, it's been not the best build. So how are they going to get the crowd going wild for this main event? By going 22 days? minutes. And it's mostly rest holds. Yes. Let's get into it, folks. Yeah. I am prob What I'm actually going to end up talking about here is, I'd say, maybe the last 10 minutes of this match, because I am... Not kidding. So much of this match is just rest holds and looking at the crowd. Fact. So the first probably five or ten minutes of this, we in the room start talking about the kid at our school who we are all stunned was not the school shooter. So that's about where we're at. Mm -hmm. uh, I will not dox us by getting the information about it, but <laughs> shout out to Mountain Dew is what I will say. <laughs> so this crowd... Really fucking hates John Cena, mm -hmm. as we have talked about. This Better. Chicago crowd, noted gang of a, just a noted asylum rather, the city of Chicago, <laughs> full of degenerates that root for the 
just bad people. They like the bad people, yeah, like the Philadelphia Bears. does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Bears. <laughs> just like the crowd hated our hero, Roman Reigns, <gasps> this crowd hates John Cena. So what basically happens is Cena hits the punch on Triple H. Triple H goes to the corner and says, oof, ow, ouch, and the crowd boos. And then Triple H comes back, punches John Cena. John Cena says, oof, ow, ouch. The crowd cheers loudly. They do this for about 12 minutes. And they do not kiss. They get so close, but they simply will not kiss. It's what the crowd wants. It's what we want. But it doesn't happen. Finally, the real move almost happens when John Mm -hmm. Cena almost hits an AA. But Triple H reverses it and then poses. And the crowd goes, hooray. And then as he's posing, John Cena beats him up in the corner. Hits a back body drop and a suplex. Actual wrestling. And then what do we get? More rest holds. We end up on the floor. Triple H tries to hit a pedigree on the floor. He's back body dropped onto the ramp. This is probably the fourth bump that has happened. And we're 15 minutes in, I'm going to guess. It was crazy, man. Like, the pacing of this match was so fucked. (laughs) Even for a Triple H <laughs> match, it was slow. Even for a Triple H match. Yeah. Dude, for, like, Go ahead. Yeah, just like as a resident uh, John Cena and Triple H mark, I was I went into this night excited, and I was just so underwhelmed by the nothing that happened in the ring for the first, I don't know, uh, 100 years, it felt like. And it wasn't even like, because of the like the show being bad, because the show was actually no. really good. Mania 22, pretty good. Yeah, we've had a lot of positive things to say about this, despite, you know, all of the lead-up Raws for this were terrible. But then, like, this match, like, Triple H, look, love him or hate him, he's a wrestler who has, who has moves, and he's cool. All right, mm-hmm. whatever. John Cena, same difference. They all have big moves when they want to use them. Neither of them did anything this entire match, but again, but rest hold, and then every so often try to do like a cool spot into a rest hold, and that was that was it forever. Was so there... Triple H just dropped onto the ramp? Somebody has a Trinidad and Tobago flag and prompts Joe to say Trinidad and Tobago flag. What are we doing? Do we have any information on that guy? We do not have any information on Trinidad and Tobago guy, dear Trinidad listener. Tobago but can I get a big shout out to Trinidad and Tobago? Pretty cool place. I'll shout, yeah, shout, I'll shout, shout out Trinidad. Okay. Shout. Whoa. All Found gold up in my chain. Gold all. <laughs> so as you can tell, we <laughs> love this match because we really want to finish talking about it. For more. Yep. So, oh, yeah. On the outside again, John Cena thrown to the ring steps, and it was a very loud thud when this happened. I am just noting anything that is possibly interesting, and John <laughs> Cena hitting the steps and it going boom, bang, bang is apparently just something I was really into. The next note I have is rest holds, rest holds, we love rest holds. <laughs> Five minutes later, John Cena throws a nasty clothesline, more rest holds, and then we finally get back into, like, anything that resembles wrestling and moves start happening. John Cena hits his five moves of doom. The crowd is absolutely livid. John Cena goes to pump up the shoes. The (laughs) AA is unsuccessful, but he hits a drop toe hold, goes for the STF, but Triple H escapes, and in doing so, hits the ref into the corner. The ref is dead. Triple H hits John Cena in the balls. <clears throat> Joe says cum is stored in the brain. Um, Mike Kyoto <laughs> still dead on the outside. Triple H grabs the hammer, hits the hammer shot. Mike Kyoto limps over. Very slow three count. One, two, at 2.9. John Cena kicks out. What? Triple H can't believe it. He goes to pin John Cena again. <clears throat> Mike Kyoto hits an even slower three count. Cena kicks out at 2.9. Again, the crowd is beyond upset. Triple H goes for a pedigree. John Cena versus into an AA. Triple H kicks out of the AA. That's insane. But John Cena hits a really shitty drop toe hold. Is that to get into another STF? Is that the first time we've seen anyone kick out of that since we started? 
I Last have Ang? to imagine Edge did once, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I think Edge did at uh, when he cashed it in. Okay. I think. I yeah, think he got out of the STF. I don't yeah. Know if, yeah, I don't think he kicked out of the AA. Mm. Anyway, know. we get the STF. Mike Kyoto limps over, and they do the thing where they have to lift up the arm of the guy that's in the hole to see if they're still breathing. And the arm comes down at one. Arm comes down at two. On the third lift, Triple H stops it at about two and a half. He's alive. But John Cena oh. just keeps holding onto the STF, and then Triple H taps out like a minute later. Absolute limp dick finish to this <laughs> just boring match. And Nico is breaking down the analysis of why this doesn't work as it's happening, fighting through tuberculosis to do it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to lay the floor to him now. Yeah, so once again, the key to this match is two things. Uh, Triple H, John Cena do not give two fucks about this main event, and they didn't have the time to do anything with it. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, and, Ty, you can tell me this. Was there any like big plans change, or was it always the plan for John Cena and Triple H to uh, be it? It was event. always the plan. Like when I was reading like observer newsletters from this time, mm -hmm. like it was always the plan for this. All right, so that fucking shocks me because uh, following the journey of Raw Down, um, I've watched Triple H at the very beginning. He is on fire. He's doing some great promos. He's looking awesome in his feud against Big Show, which was some of the worst matches we had to watch. It was pathetically bad. But I saw he had it in him, and I don't know what the hell happened, but, like, he just kind of started losing steam. And then they get to this match, and John Cena is, once again, he is being portrayed in this mode where it's like, I don't know, like, he's pushing away from like you know thug life and all that but you know he, he he's just starting to get in super cena mode but it's still a little new he didn't really bring much to it triple h didn't bring much to it like a lot of the meetings was like i will defend my championship and triple h is like mind games <laughs> yeah and like that was basically the whole setup to this and now the match i mean yeah there were a lot of rest holds but honestly when there wasn't it was okay. It was like... Yeah, but that was like I could, 30 seconds of the match. They just didn't want to do anything but build up this yeah. aura of this match. But there was no aura to begin with. Like, yeah. the and build didn't help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Triple H, honestly, like... Like, I mean, he got wins and stuff, but he didn't feel like... He really did a lot to, like... You know, he didn't feel like a indomitable force. He just kind of felt like... Well, Triple H, I mean, you know he's a main eventer, so, I mean, come on now. Like, we don't have to really build this up. Which is, no, no, you do have to build it up. It was stupid not to build it up better. And, like I said, if this was like a, like a No Mercy mid-card pay-per-view match, I would have said it was good. It's like, yeah, too many rest holds, but you know what? They could have cut, like, 11 minutes from it. But, like, the actual bones of, like, the actual moves and stuff going on, they did some... Like, not interesting, but, like, good stuff. But it's 22 minutes. It slogs for the first 10. It's ridiculously paced. There's no heat. It's one of the was. I can't... now. I can't say it's one of the worst main events because I've watched most of WrestleManias and there are so many worst main events, but it's probably one of the most nothing main events I, I'd say it time. stands out as, like, worse than a bad match. Because in a bad match, there's memorable moments, and you can go yep. back and go, "Shit, this is bad." I got to show you this bad match. Like if <laughs> I like like look at like from the matches I've shown Dave and Martin for like tens yeah, of years at this point, point, a decade. I go, "Hey, look at this match," and I'll it'll be the Doomsday Cage match from WCW, and I go, mm -hmm. "Look at this stupid shit," and yes. then everyone goes, "That's a spectacle. This is the most ridiculous thing. You'll remember it." If I would say, uh. Like last week or two weeks later, hey Dave, Martin, do you remember John Cena and Triple H? To be like, no, huh? No. Nah. I just yeah. watched it yesterday. What? <laughs> I don't remember yeah. it. Yep, a hundred percent, dude. It's 
and I agree with you. I mean, this has always been my philosophy on things in life. I'd rather have something bad than something that just makes me feel nothing. And that's what this match is. However, I will give it one excellent positive, though. Yeah. Raw main evented WrestleMania. We're the best show. I, I can't, I can't fault that. That's right. But so, tell him. at the end of the day, we're still better than a Rey Mysterio match, even though this match was complete Oof. nothing. True. <laughs> True. It, man, we made it. We got through Mania 22. What a Mania. great high energy finish to this seven hour podcast that Editor Ty is putting together. Listen, Ooh, man, we are all exhausted. We watched four hours of Mania yesterday. And now we have to go into this today and film all this stuff with uh, multiple mm-hmm. crews. I think we deserve a little tired break at the end, a little, a little baby mode to take a nap. Too Especially much pizza, too much, too much butter chicken. Too much bu- the butter chicken killed us, mice. man. God, it looks good though. I wish yeah, I had. Yeah, tell, tell them all about butter chicken. <laughs> oh, we did. Yeah, but you know, just to reiterate, uh, butter chicken, delicious, will kill your body. Like you it, it killed Pete so bad, he's not even here. He had to leave. He had to go. But right, at the last sec, after the main event of the SmackDown, they all just dipped because they were dying. Yeah, yeah they and, all they all shitted and had to help each other with their shitteds. This is a hundred percent true, and that is exactly why we need this rest. But hey, don't worry. Because we get to rest, that means, because if we just went into it right now, I guarantee half of us would probably quit with the next few months we got on Raw. And I haven't even watched it yet. I don't know what's going on, but I already know it's bad. As a as the leader of the Looking Forward group, um, you guys are in for pain. Hell yeah. Let's Fuck go. Yeah. Um, Masochists here. Emerald... Yeah. This is your first big pay-per-view. Like uh-huh. watching it, caring about it. How did you feel going through it? And give me just like high points without like going super into detail and maybe like why did I watch this? This is stupid. All right. Uh tag team championship, pretty good. Big Ben won. Big ups. Nope. Uh two thumbs up. Uh Edge versus Mick Foley. Absolutely rabid. Loved it. That's great. Uh, Trish Stratus versus Mickey James. Mid. Uh, again, this is 2006. They're not treating women right. Fair uh, enough. Vince McMahon, Shawn Michaels. I was there for the destruction of the McMahons and the Spirit Squad. Fuck them. I hope they all uh, eat bad butter chicken and die on the toilet. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> John Cena and Triple H. Oh, my God. They fumbled it so bad. I could not even say anything about it when we were talking about it. It was just... <sighs> Which is funny because, I mean, we just watched The Chaperone a little bit ago. Wink, 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 <laughs> wink, wink. And uh, Triple H, you hate Triple H. And then you started hate Triple H. And then you started loving him, being a ex-con, uh, becoming a good guy. So maybe you had a better feel of Triple H. But you just wanted John Cena to win. And by the end yeah. of that match, you didn't care if John Cena won. You just wanted it to be over. <laughs> I did. I wanted it to be over. They were just, it was just holes. And it's just like, this is wrestling. Flip a guy. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, Kill it's not, him. It's not, it's not Greco-Roman like real wrestling. It's like, this no. is a show. Like, yeah. A show. yeah, we were. <laughs> this isn't high school wrestling. This is in the ring. Fucking unventilated arena. The squared <laughs> circle. That's ventilated the squared arena. Unventilated. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Listen, there was so there. much fucking dust. <laughs> it can't be ventilated. There's so much smoke. <laughs> oh. But just like. They needed to do more. They kept hyping it up over weeks and weeks and weeks. And it finally <laughs> happened. And it was nothing. Like, like weeks prior, they were like, like aching to like they were clawing at the air, trying to get at each other. They were trying and to then kiss. It finally <laughs> happened. Yes, they they wouldn't let them kiss. The homoeroticism keeps on winning, but it never fully wins. They're just queer baiting us at this point. They got massaged this- in the back. They got off before the match, and they had post nut clarity through the whole match, and so they didn't Listeners- give us nothing. Listeners. 
the, wrestling is the biggest queer bait show of all time. <laughs> no argument. Absolutely. Don't fight me on this. Uh, but I guess I. What else can I can I say? It was it was a decent show. Thankfully, uh, Mick Foley and Shawn Michaels carried the show. Thank you, my gentlemen. I hope to see you uh, uh, bloody and deranged in the future. So, ah. going forward, going into the next pay-per-views for the next months, it gets worse. It oh. gets way worse. I'm not happy about this. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad. Why is it get worse? I'm it, ready to go. We're in 2006. We're supposed to be going up in the years. Things are to get better you're supposed to learn from their mistakes ty yeah we haven't uh, even please. we haven't had the mistakes yet yeah we're ready for yeah oh, this is this no. is this is the like we're smooth sailing this oh, yeah no. this show is like <laughs> hey guys we tried we put on a good super bowl. by the way like uh emerald in comparison this is like the super bowl of shows this is the one where we all build to to finish off strong Hang on, I gotta I gotta scream real loud, so I, I'm gonna uh, dip my mic uh, sensitivity down a bit. God damn it! Yep. <laughs> All right. So yeah. we get new beginnings, and these beginnings are going to be incredible. Yeah, consider wow. the next raw to be the reset, or no, don't reboot. Either we get well, the reset or reboot. everything. Uh, either gets rebooted, reset, or just continued on past the point where it should have ended. Oh, the yeah, next pay per view they tr- as like a season finale, basically. Yeah, uh, and the next pay per view they try for is SummerSlam in uh, August. So we're yeah. in April. Also, yeah, I want to say, in my limited experience, uh, SummerSlam is somehow always better than WrestleMania, even though WrestleMania is the Super Bowl. So I'm I'm optimistic about the future, but you are making me very worried. It's, it's what I will that's, say. It will be great content. That's what it's all okay. about. Well, that's... At least I can take solace in that. And for... Besides, oh, no, go on. imagine watching good wrestling? I can't. No. That, that's, a, that's a faux pas. Yeah, that's, yeah, that doesn't exist. But... To the fans listening, to Alex listening, to Martin listening, even though he's right here. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for watching. This has been a long episode and a long series. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. And uh, pray. No, before we go, before huh? we go. Huh? Oh. If we hit 1,000 Patreon dis- subscribers, I will shove my hand into a boiling pot of SpaghettiOs pasta. There it is. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the, hit the button. Oh, yeah. Subscribe button. Look, look, look. Hit it. Hit it. Hey, guys. Give us uh, money. I got a problem here. I don't what? have a Patreon. Should I Should I start one? <laughs> Why not? Uh, guys, Even I'm, if you I'm get a buck str- a month. Fuck it. That's a buck a month. Guys, I'm, str- guys, I'm struggling here. We, we keep making all this Patreon jokes, but we don't have a Patreon. The people Wait, are, have a Patreon? Are, is that real? The people are the people are clamoring over here for this content, and we don't have a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that real? Is it not a Patreon? There's no Patreon, no. guys. There's no Patreon. <laughs> it's okay. It's they, you can find me on the street and give me money. I'll take it. How am I supposed to get money? <laughs> yeah. Here's what. All right, listeners. Here's what you do: put a hundred dollars in cash in your mailbox. Write Nico on it. It'll get there. <laughs> I'll find its way there. The U.S. Postal Service knows where Nico lives. It's true. We've had many be deals. It, be it at his home or at his uh, mm. Alamo Rehab Center, mm-hmm. Nico will get the money. Yeah, and yeah, write fifty dollars and write Dave onto a fifty, so we can get him out of the well he lives in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, that's a pretty deep well too. I've only climbed out for so long. The pod has kept gone for too long, and now I must descend into the well. <laughs> Fair enough. Guys, we cracked 25 minutes. We went three minutes longer than the match. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Let's but, go. We're cute. And more entertaining, too. 
Uh, thank you all for listening. Appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next week in Raw, where we uh, melt Emerald's brain a little bit more. Truly. I think everyone's getting in a little bit of a melting next week. <laughs>